Good evening and welcome to Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting, August 28th, 2019. Um, it is uh, 6.25. We have um, um, resumed our, our meeting from executive session and um, we will now conduct business in, in open session. And um, first I would like to introduce the um, Energy Committee and um, we've been discussing oh, solar. So David. Oh, well, go ahead, please. Thank you. <laughs> and we are a subcommittee of the Energy Committee, Wonderful. I guess you could say. We are the um, solar development, the Landfill Solar Development Committee. Um, my name is David Gilbert Keith. Steve Viper. M.A. Swedland. Kevin Scarborough. And, and I'm also on the committee. Diane was also. Diana Schindler. Thank you. Um, so we've talked considerably before this, but uh, as we finally come to the end of our due diligence, I brought this as kind of a threat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take our advice. you <laughs> <laughs> hit us over the head with that pile of work. <laughs> is we are recommending that we proceed with Nexamp as the top candidate among the six that responded to our RFP. And just, you know, to, I guess to give people in, uh, in the audience and, uh, and TV a background, over the last years, really, um, but recently more, more uh, with over the last year, you guys have really dug in again and looked at uh, putting solar uh, panels in a solar project um, capping over the top of our cap of our landfill up at the transfer station, and it would be a way to reuse the area, um, get um, energy production out of a out of a brownfield, and um, so you've done a lot of work, a lot of interviews, a lot of a lot of work to um, to kind of narrow down um, companies and, um, and some sort of pro program. That and I'd like to thank all the companies and their representatives who did a lot of work to to bid on this and, and, our, and we it was a very tough decision it has come down to the other benefit of this aside from solar generation is financial generation and we weighted heavily toward the best offer we got um, but that was not the only consideration we had it was there were financial and non-financial considerations including how well we thought someone would be capable of putting solar on our landfill without hurting the landfill and the cap and all that stuff and their experience. So, so forgive the, the sound, it's pouring out. So yeah. It's pretty hard for people in the background to hear. So, um, so I, um, I also wanted to thank um, Beth Greenblatt, who's been our um, yeah. consultant on this for, for many years. For many years, <laughs> we were trying to figure it out, but at least seven maybe years, I think. If not longer. So it's been a very, very great asset to the town and uh, it's been involved in many of these solar projects. And um, so and so just to recap for those in the audience, that the committee has rec recommended um, Nexamp as the company that, that they would like to recommend uh, the town move forward um, and to try and enter into successful negotiations to to um, create a contract to, to put solar on our landfill. So if we vote tonight, to um, award the the lease agreement to Nexamp, then you're going to go ahead. Pending negotiation. Pending negotiation, successful negotiation. You're going to keep pursuing this for us, right, Beth? You have enough time on your grant. I just want to make sure. We have, we just. Yeah. So the the original grant, and I'll defer to Diana. The original grant expired at the end of May, but right. Your town administrator has applied for a follow-on grant, okay. and we did. We budgeted for contracted services regardless for yeah. the same okay, amount. Okay, so we have the ability to keep. I just. Yes. My only concern is I just want to make sure that you stay on board with this for us, and you don't. I mean, we've had the start, start and stop multiple times, but we've a, been able to successfully get keep you um, as you know, or keep you allow us to be your client. So I just wanted to make sure that we would still work. Yes. And, yep. and it appears that since you work with Lisa, that would be not a problem for mm -hmm. us. So, our great. town council, she's All done right. a lot of projects in the past with, with our current town council. So um, 
with other towns. With other towns, yep. So, okay, so. So just the yeah. numbers, um, like maybe the people are interested in what were, what their offer was. Um, and just if I have this correct, you could, um, they're, they're looking at putting approximately 12.6 acres worth of solar on our landfill, which is much, it's probably twice the size back there, but we use it for other services. And um, so we have a, you know, a, a finite space that we're gonna uh, put the solar on. And um, there are different um, blocks, uh, depending on the, the SMART program, which is put out by the state, there are, there are many different blocks. You're laughing at me because, go ahead and try and explain it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll take a quick stab at making this uh, really simple for layman's terms. Um, there, are, um, there are multiple blocks of uh, capability that the state offers, and um, we're hoping to jump into one of those blocks. And each time the state puts one of these out, uh, the uh, Western Mass has a very small pie, and it gets gobbled up in like a couple of weeks. Like it's filled up. There is no um, incentive for any any developers to do anything. So we're they're extending it. Hopefully, in a couple of weeks, we're going to hear September 5th. They're going to hopefully roll out this program, and we'll know what the true incentives are. These are kind of uh, budget figures right now until that until that project um, gets rolled out by the state and then and then they'll kind of refine their bid but um the bid that um we had heard depending on what block we wind up in it's pretty rare that we're going to wind up in the first block which is nine and then there's blocks nine uh, 10 11 and 12 and they had offered um full financial offer including the lease tax and bonus over a 20-year term of um if we were in block nine was going to be six million Four hundred eighty-two thousand two hundred eighty two hundred twenty-eight dollars. Um, again, that's probably rare that we go in that, and and the incentives drop for for these developers four percent each block they go into, and then there's other um, reasons that they drop within those blocks. But um, so block ten, if we wound up in there, would be six million one hundred nine six eighty-six, and then. 11 is 5 million, 8, 11, uh, 653. And then if we wind up in the last block, which is 12, it'll be 5 million, 513, 619. Um, the total project size that they would build um, would be a, about, um, oh, this is, uh, so 3,666 3, kilowatts of DC and 2,000 kilowatts of AC. Um, and there's, there is the ability for them to expand a little bit depending on how everything lays out there. Um, so if they do build a larger thing, our incentives would go up. That's pretty um, good. So um, there would still need to be negotiations with um, our assessors and town council and this committee still. And um, so there's a lot of work to go ahead, but we want to get, um, from what I understand from the committee and everybody, is that we want to get all our ducks in a row so that when this when this uh, happens, um, because it takes over six to eight months or six months to get approval from DEP to actually go on to that site with a landfill, and then about six months of uh, negotiation with Eversource to then hook up. There's a lot of design work to be done about the power load and how we hook up and, and all of that. So we want to have everything in a row and approved so that um, we can move fast and get in on this, um, because it filled up so fast last time municipalities are a disservice because of all the you know the time and red tape that we need to go through as a as a, as a governmental body versus just a private sector so i hope that is it simple is enough yeah. 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 so um for, for See? Our education yeah, right. yeah well <laughs> so then um i guess i would i would take a motion to a, Go ahead with, um, I mean, th there were other offers too. So they had, just to back up, they had looked at six companies. Six submissions and yep. narrowed it down to three. Narrowed it down to three and did multiple uh, interviews and back questions and a lot of work went into kind of narrowing down who they would uh, look at. And the, and the companies were uh, Brightfields, Cycle 7, and Nexamp. And, and I have numbers on all the others, but uh, Nexamp, was far and away the best deal it looks like to me uh, and they, they looked at criteria such as um, the evaluation of the criteria um, you know quality of company how many projects they've put in all of that stuff um, you know the quality of the engineering all, all the non-price stuff and then they also evaluated the pricing and um, 
and Nextamp just far and away exceeded in that. So pretty easy choice for us. Um, so I make that motion to um, award the contract to Nextamp or move forward with the process. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Any further discussion or questions from the audience? Yep. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Wonderful. Again, thank you, thank you so much for your work. Beth, thank you. Great, great, great job, Emma. Beth, you thank work you on so your patience, much for right? coming out. <laughs> Let's see. And, uh, Next. And <laughs> no, yeah. no. <laughs> Next project will be. Yeah. Have a no, safe really, trip back. Really appreciate all be that careful work. in the rain. Yeah, yeah, it well, really rains. Pretty wet out there. So. Um, yeah. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for coming early, guys. I really appreciate and it. Questions come up. Of course. We're here. Oh, no, I can do the announcements if okay. you want. Okay. Um, I just wa uh, wanted to say, uh, we're, for Selectman's comments, um, we had a visit from the Secretary of EEOA, um, Climate Kate. We nicknamed her. She's she's really great. Um, she came out to visit Mill Village Road because we um, were successful in receiving a grant for replacement of the Mill Village culvert. So that process is starting. Um, and then we had, um, went up for a meeting at the FERCOG with um, the secretary. And it was very successful. And I just want to say again, thank you to Kevin and um, everybody that uh, participated in the MVP program came to meetings. Apparently, um, there were 60 communities that applied for the MVP grant. We were only, we were one of a handful that were fully funded. We received $278,000, um, and only 23 communities received any money out of the 60. So our grants are being very successful, and I want to thank everyone that participates. We have our meetings, the steering committee meetings, but also we've had very successful public meetings. And um, so this new round is round four. There, there, there will be new money coming out in the next few weeks. So we're rep we are applying, applying for the um, engineering of, um, and well, the final engineering and permit permitting for Kelleher Drive culvert. And we will be having a combined hazardous mitigation MVP program uh, meeting um, for the public. Um, I'm trying to think when it, when it was. Oh, 6 p.m. on October 2nd. So this is very important for the renewal of our hazardous mitigation plan, which we will be talking about um, applying for additional money for Old Deerfield area of 5 and 10 that floods by Richardson's Candy Kitchen and that whole area, and um, also down here by Bl Bloody Brook. So it's very important that this combined MVP hazardous mitigation meeting that we're put putting together, people at least come and sign in and just, you know, complain, because we're writing down complaints. So please come. This way, you can be officially complain, and we can document it, and it will come in. It will hopefully generate some money. So please come. Um, so anyway, thank you to Kevin and John Pachork for showing up, and um, Mike and Diana for um, the visit site visit. Um, the other thing I was very interested. I just I went to a um, conference. Uh, all, all the Northeast states um, were coming together for the Farm Bill, trying to access money for Farm Bill. And one of the um, breakout sessions was community-based social marketing. And um, it was very interesting in the sense that um, education isn't enough. You have to have some kind of other, um, you know, public strength and the willingness of people to participate. So um, I have a whole list of kind of things that um, we could try to do to make people not put wipes, dental floss, and grease into our sewer treatment plant. It was, it was just very interesting. And the education is in face-to-face uh, -face works. You gotta go out and ask people. But you gotta have kind of gimmicky things like, um, you know, stickers you put on the trash bins so people, as they're driving by and uh, as the trash is sitting out there, it's a reminder 
yes, this is what you got to do. But we've got to come up with some other things besides just education because obviously education isn't working mm -hmm. either. But it was a very good committee. And then I just um, wanted to talk about the mosquitoes real quick. Sure. Okay. Um, I know there's all kinds of um, mosquitoes are in the news about Tripoli. We are testing clean here in Deerfield. We are trapping and testing and being clean. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that our highway department mm -hmm. has been really, really on top of stuff. And I want to say thank you to Kevin. Every drop of water anywhere, standing water, they're throwing out... Um, the lava side, which is, you know, BTI, the natural lava side, and they're putting it in the catch basins. Um, and I'm, I, I think people are also must be patrolling their yards. And like after this rain today, there's this huge amount of rain. Go out and make sure that there's no standing water in your pots because, um, you know, you're going to have some mosquitoes in a couple days. So the idea is to just be more vigilant in your backyard and the highway department's been doing a really good job. We have been lava siding all over town. And so um, the Kulix mosquito, there's 51 species of mosquitoes in Massachusetts. The Kulix is the one that n most generally carries the West Nile disease. And that's our highway department is the one that has been really, really good about getting rid of those mosquitoes. And they're in more urban areas. The triple E mosquito is a menorah mosquito, and those numbers are down too because we've been relatively dry. Um, the east, southeastern part of the state has been getting terrible amount of rain, and that's why it's going crazy there with triple E. So we've been sort of, we haven't had these kind of rainstorms very much lately. So our numbers are down. There's not anything, as far as we know, circulating at the moment, but please be vigilant, vigilant, vigilant. 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 Well, Vigilant. Vigilant. Yeah, sorry. Just keep Vigilant paying attention. In the yes, pay attention to, to your, make sure your screens are repaired, you know, wear bug repellent, you know, patrol your yard, you know, and, and wear long sleeves if you're going to be out between, you know, after dusk till dawn when in, the, in, most activity happens. Yeah, in Mohawk, they, uh, Mohawk, you know, Valley, they're Cold, uh, cold rain and such, they're canceling any outdoor activities at, at dusk for, uh, for the kids, you know, sports and stuff because they are in critical and it's critical till the first hard frost. So, you um, know, we're, we're actually on track. La last year, our first positive West Nile um, mosquito was Speaking. August 1st, uh, and then their last positive test was September 12th. Um, this year, the first positive. West Nile mosquito was was July 31st. So, so hopefully, you know, this will only be for another couple of weeks, and we'll have enough cool weather that that will end. But I have to again say, if you see the highway department people, just say thank you because yeah, they are actually really out there doing this on a regular basis, and our numbers are way down, and that really your disease load is down because there's not those mosquitoes. We've identified the areas where the habitat is and we're attacking the habitat on a lava side basis so hopefully we never have to spray or anything like that so thank you uh so we'll oh. go ahead can i make yeah, a comment um yeah of course a couple of weeks ago um two of our police officers were hit by a vehicle oh yeah um thank you thank i you served for 14 that. years as a special in town i know the risks that these guys take, all our first responders, whether it be police, fire, EMT, um, it's a very dangerous job, at, especially at night. And uh, we are very fortunate that it wasn't worse than it was. Unfortunately, I was on the EMT squad at the time that we had an officer killed under the same situation back in 76. Mm. So, um, and you know, the gravity of this is, one of the officers actually hit the top of the cruiser. Yeah. He was airborne. Yep. Another one went through the windshield of the car that, and that's, you know, they said, well, he just had a minor laceration on his elbow. We'll well, he was hit and he, he went through a windshield. Yeah. So, um, and Tim, Tim has a, it's a very dangerous job. Um, 
And this is what police, the police going. had all the lights going. They had two cruisers because they had a child and another uh, woman in custody. Um, the child wasn't in custody, but the... Um, well, the it, woman was stopped for it's, uh, um, driving under the influence, so it was so, already a bad situation. Yeah. yeah, and they were just getting getting back into the cruisers to clear the scene when this happened. So, um, you know, we owe a lot to all emergency services in town. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, uh, we have the best in Franklin County. No doubt. We do. Uh, Actually, I, I think I, I have always said I think it's best in Western Mass. Yeah. From what I see from the Homeland Security Council that I sit on, which is all of Western Mass. You know, and you you know I, I was fortunate enough to be on the fire department for a lot of years back when it wasn't very well run. Mm -hmm. um, but now we have a premier fire department that is demand from everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and, you yeah, know... So. These guys put in a lot of time, uh, whether it be fire, police, EMT, to make this town a better town. And, you know, I'm just expressing my gratitude mm -hmm. to these people. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, I second that. And our, our um, you know, we're so grateful for the work that the three towns have put together for our South County EMS. Our ambulance was there, I think the first responders were there in three minutes. Um, that is just. Incredible. I mean, our, our call time is about just over seven minutes. Anywhere. Um, anywhere in, in our region, but um, three minutes to be there and, and you know, and to, to get a hold of our officers that quick is just, it's just amazing. They, um, just a shout out to them and everybody who responded. I think Waitley was there, a bunch of uh, state police were there, and in just a short time it came over the radio and they were there to help. So, um, just very fortunate to live in a community that invests in our services like that. Um, because this this is when it pays off. Um, so thank you for mentioning that. I really appreciate that. Um, so um, we'll get into I've got some other stuff to talk about, but we'll get into this um, and some of these things will come up. So um, first we'll we'll approve the minutes um, of previous meetings. I have July 1st and August, uh, July 31st, August 1st and August 5th. Um, does anybody um, I, I, I would just like to make a couple um, changes to the July 31st one. Sure. Um, on public comment here, it says the board would be paid by the rest of the town. Where's that on uh, the... the last sentence? It should be spread over. It, instead of saying paid by the rest of the town, it should be spread over all taxpayers. Let's see, we'll be paid by sewer users and paid, okay, and we'll be, right, cause it, because the sewer users are also taxpayers. taxpayers. Right. So, so it would be paid by. That's where I think some of the confusion comes from. It would be it's paid by uh, what spread, was it? Uh, the, would be, instead of being paid by the rest of the town, it's the 25% would be spread over all taxpayers. So the sewer users pay their sewer fee and plus and they pay the tax. It's not right. that they're not paying the tax. Correct. And then the septic people pay the tax. It's okay. everybody yep. that pays taxes pays the 25%. And okay. then um, under um, the MVP program discussion here, it says Same um, de details, yep, details of different project rounds of the MVP program. Um, Brenda must needs to be notified of expected funds, so receipt of funds um, um, can be tracked accurately, they must be numbered. Um, I, you know, okay, so we just need to add that the, we have to be. Brenda needs we, to be notified of expected funds, so receipt of funds, funds can, can be, be tracked, tracked accurately. by numbers. Accurately for each round uh, project for reference by number? By number, yeah. Okay. Um, and then Kelleher Drive, we we talked about Kelleher Drive. There's some, there's part of that will be round is part, so we're getting the initial money for engineering under round three, and then round four would be still Kelleher Drive. That would be the um, implementation. So I don't know so if we want to say where do you see that? this is Kelleher Drive should be part of round four application. It's we've already, already been part of three. It's already been we've been awarded money for engineering of Cal Kelleher Drive in part three. Okay. And then okay. round four is the implementation, which is what we're going to be in the next two or three 
Well, in the, within the drive. next month, whenever the money is announced, we're going to apply for it for implementation. I don't know what the end cycle, you know, the award cycle is because, um, you know, that's whenever the governor finds money, he seems to be putting it into the cycle. But we we should put in or be planning to put in, and, and that's why we set up that October 2nd meeting mm -hmm. so that we can put it in for the round four. Okay. Yep. I've got that captured here. We can change that. Because um, that's going to be like a million dollars, so that will be, or a million two, right, Kevin? Or if Kevin's still here. Yep, he's scooted. And we, we, we've, I think it's going to be over a million, so we need to do that. So um, otherwise, I'll, I'm all set with You're 31st. good with all of them? Oh, yeah. the 31st, so yeah. uh, make a motion for the 31st. Do I have a second? A second. With those changes, and um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, August 1st, I make a motion to approve those minutes. I have a second on those. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then August 5th, do you have a two? I just want to add um, to under the Board of Health, like dumping any water in the yard and repair. Protective of, measures yeah, like? Dumping any water in your yard and repairing any screens. And repairing. And then under, um, we talked about uh, vaping. Yeah. Um, wants to eliminate vaping. I wish we could eliminate vaping in town, but it is Regulate. to eliminate flavored va vaping products. Uh, Ms. Ness, um, flavored vaping. Would like to eliminate, eliminate vaping products. Uh, flavored vaping products. So kids, so we can okay. cut ki use by kids, mm -hmm. but. Um, so that otherwise, and then it's fine. So I make a motion to approve August 5th with those changes. I'll second it. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 With those changes, good. Okay, so that's that. Um, so we've already uh, awarded the lease agreement for the solar landfill, hopefully, uh, moving forward for that. So issue a one-day liquor license for um, Mycoterra, my maybe? Mycoterra? Mycoterra. Mycoterra, thank you. <laughs> uh, farm, uh, this is the, um, for, the for, for September 14th, which would be the Mushroom Festival at 75 Stillwater Road. I know we went through and um, Chief had the parking squared away and um, uh, the health agent, Dick was going to yeah, just, he Dick went over all that. Yeah, with he the, checked everything. All that stuff, so. Uh, Dave um, had some questions and he addressed them. You got those answered, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. But there was uh, also a question of food vendors. Yeah. Permit that. I think. Right, he needs to get the food service. So yeah, yeah Dick okay. was aware of that and was okay with the, okay. the site. So I make a motion to approve that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, do we need a second? Second. 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 All those in Aye. favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, and do you have some? You'll um, we'll sign yeah, that? Yeah, Okay. Do All right. I'm on vacation. And then. Um, the I have yours for Yankee Candle. Oh. We have another one? Or is there another one there? Yeah, I think that actually is another one that Pat had put Yankee in before Campbell. she went on vacation for girls' night out. For well, I thought we did Campbell. that last time, no? Did we do that last time? We did that time? last I, time. I, I'm yep. sure we did that yes. last time. All right, good. Yeah, I think it maybe was. That's what I thought, but I just. But we okay. can sign so if we had it or something. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Um, Thank you. So, wastewater treatment update. Um, so, really, a uh, couple of things. Um, we didn't thank everybody that came out for the informational night on the 20th. Right? Is it the 20th? Yes. Yes, it was. Going by quick. Um, so that was really good. We had a nice open house, and everybody met back here. We had a nice uh, discussion here, um, trying to educate more and more about the debt exclusion vote that will take place on September 9th. Um, please encourage everybody to go out and do that uh, vote. Um, the wonderful news is that tomorrow morning um, we'll be signing a commitment letter for USDA grant. So that's really exciting news. Um, that um, we have, you know, it was all along we've been wondering, do we, are we going to, you know, a soft commitment, will they find money? Um, and this was really critical, and we were always hoping to have that before the vote. Um, we were hoping to have it before last vote, before town meeting. We've been working on this a long, long time, and 
USDA has been working on it. Our, our engineers, uh, Dave Prickett, has been working on this a lot. Um, so we did secure um, a grant. So we have, and, and if everybody will remember, um, the debt exclusion is just for the project. Town meeting had approved, um, you know, spending of up to 19 million. Um, that when we applied for this grant, we were looking at phase one of the project, which, which was around 12 or 13 million bucks um, to, to do the first phase of the project down there. Um, the way the assessment kind of laid out, and we've been revising, and that's why it's not kind of complete with the implement, implementation plan, is that we're still deciding exactly how much we're going to tackle at one time. But so when we first applied for the USDA grant, it was phase one, and that, that's what they've awarded us. Um, so um, tomorrow at 10, we'll, we'll go to Amherst, to the USDA uh, regional office, to, um, to secure a loan uh, for $8,569,000, um, a grant of $2,604,501, uh, um, there's an app, app, uh, applicant comp contribution of $250,000, um, so a total of $11 million, uh, four, uh, $432,501 to help make this project um, more affordable for the residents and the users of the town. Um, so really excited to go down and secure that and uh, bring that money back to town to make this, you know, uh, project, you know, more doable for our, for our community. It's a big lift regardless. We have a lot to do and um, it's not, not the only project in town coming up, but um, they pulled this money from all across the nation um, to be able to pull money together to, to help fund us. Um, it, it's, uh, it was a huge ask and, and it's a big get for us. I mean, we're really, really grateful to get that, that money to make this project um, more affordable for our, for our and people. Thank you, and I just wanna say thank you, Trevor, again, because you really oh. hustled for this money. You're welcome, yeah. This, this is a it. hustle. Happy to make it work. It really. Thank you. There's a lot of there's a lot of work in these grants. I, I, I you know, can't tell you. And it's personal perseverance, perseverance to you know you keep making phone calls and chit chatting and checking in and it. So it's a constant thing. And then it's it's really what gets you the grant. And it's also um, the hard work of this team in this office, Diana and um, uh, Barb, Brenda. Um, everybody's been pulling together to get this information to USDA and, and a huge thank you to Dave Prickett. He, they went way and above what their scope of project was for that, um, way over, because it went from, you know, environmental study, you know, just a first review to a full-blown environmental, um, which is a bunch of red tape and a whole bunch more work. Um, there was endangered species that came up with the sturgeon. Um, they were worried, you know, if you're going to put pilings in the river, sturgeons have something in their like in their in their head and that it can literally you know kill them if the, any loud concussions happen in the in the river luckily we're not piling anything we're not working in the in the flood zone at all we're 100 feet away from that so um, we're not within that 100 feet flood zone um, there was a couple other things they had to go through so it, it was um, a lot of work on their part and I can't thank them enough for all that effort to um, help secure money for the town of Deerfield uh, and the users. It's, it's a big deal. It really is a big deal to get that kind of money. Um, so when us. we were kids and our parents were throwing dynamite in the river, it wasn't a good thing. <laughs> no, it was not a good thing. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't when the sturgeon was running. <laughs> uh, was that a way to get salmon? Or <laughs> No, it was my father's way of entertainment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, not a good time. Um, Some floaters. Yeah, a couple of floaters there. Um, so that's really exciting to bring that bring that money back and um you know a couple of other things that we heard from the meeting um you know some of the concerns were structure and how that how we're going to lay out educating the people so that they understand that this isn't um you know a fly-by-night enterprise that we we have a structure in place a team in place to implement this there's been a working group for the last year and a half since i've been working on this project and we just met um, the other morning, uh, Tuesday morning to open up bids for the clarifier. Um, these are the parts for that clarifier. This was the emergency repair. So that project is moving right on target just as we had set it out to be. Um, 
The pricing looks looks good so far. We had um, two bids on the parts, and um, I haven't been notified yet. There was some last minute um, information. Uh, the way the bids came in, some had exceptions, some didn't. So there's some technical review that's being done by the engineers and by uh, Keith Millen, our chief op operator, to make sure that you know those two bids are, are vetted really well and um, they're full of a lot of detail and technical stuff that was outside kind of the other working groups realm so we left it to the professionals of Tony uh, our engineer and um, and Keith to work on that um, and get that information back to us and then uh, there'll be also a um, a bid meeting for contractors so we, we first evaluated the qualifications of the companies that supplied the parts um, and then we evaluate, you know, like, do they have spare parts on hand? Do they supply spare parts with it? How quickly can they get that? How many, how many projects have they done? Have they done at least 10 in New England? Um, um, how many years experience do the engineers have on their staff? Um, all kinds of qualifications, insurance, and all, all this work needs to go into that. So we evaluate that. Once, and we found that both companies met all the qualifications we asked for. And then at that point, you can open both bids because they both qualified. And um, there was some significant money difference between the two, but there were significant details of, the, again, the exemptions, um, the exceptions that they wanted to, you know, that they put in with their bid until they review that a little further. So we're kind of go through all that and make sure that we're um, making the right decision. It's not just about the lowest price. It's about making sure that all of the parts are involved and, mm -hmm. you know, they're not leaving out something that, you know, sure, their price is less, but it doesn't have this whole other part you need. So. Uh, are we going to be able to, um, I think it's really important we get this process paper. Yes, we're working on a, that. You showed me a draft. Mm -hmm. And I yep. was hoping that we could have this for, I, I, I really would love to have it by Friday. So could Can you work on it? <laughs> Okay. Uh, it's, you know, one of the things that is really difficult, and um, it's really great to have, we've been having some public help with this because, you know, um, just personally, I'll speak from personal uh, experiences that, that I work about 60 hours a week for my day job, you know, and then there's, there's town common committee meeting, there's board of oversight meeting for the senior center. There's, you know, um, all kinds of stuff. Hiring town administrators, uh, assistant town administrators, dealing with personnel issues. There is immense amount of work um, that this staff does in town and that we then, you know, do as well with them. Um, so it's super hard to, you know, you say, oh, cut 20 days, you'll have this ready. It's, you know, um, at some point I need to see my wife and kids, <laughs> my son. So um, I do. I want to get that together. And I think we've had a lot of good discussions Tuesday morning about how that would lay out and what those aspects would well, be and who would be how, on that. How do you want to, um, do you want us to It almost it? means to, we need to have like a working group to do this. I mean, every time we have a meeting, that's got to be everybody comes and, we're, and you can, well, can and we I post, think maybe just can, sitting could, there doing could, a working um, group is really what needs to happen. Okay. Well. Uh, Dave, what, what's your, what, staff wants what days be. are you working this um, this next week after Labor Day? Because we should try next to week. I'm off uh, Monday, Tuesday. So so and Friday, I'm off. So so Tuesday. Where where we are you? We do Wednesday the fourth. I could uh, do. But you're working. I'm working. And then 5th, okay. we're back here for a meeting. That's, uh, so well, Monday's we Labor we Day. To, well, I need the day off. Right. Well, we can't have a meeting um, and, with, right. on and, a holiday. Right. And I mean, Tuesday, a post meeting. I've got a Board of Oversight meeting for South County Senior Center and at 5 o'clock. Okay. I, I, Homeland Security. Well, Homeland Security is in the morning. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay after um, noontime. I got to work. Okay. Work. No. Yeah. So then you have Oversight Committee? Yeah, at 5. So maybe we can come back at you know, 6.30. Yeah, well, uh, or maybe we can circulate it and... Um, and work with could, our okay, staff. Cause, yeah, because... Right, Mike's uh, nodding his what, head. What are you, are yeah. you referring to the... So the, I'm referring to... Uh, that the chart. flow chart. A flow yes, chart. Okay. We talked with David. I'm sorry, I missed, I skipped that. Yeah, so we, yeah. we talked to David at our working group meeting and I think Mike is actually, um, so, has started to work on that. Mm -hmm. and we've So, so at Mike, that. you, can you put that flow chart, because the clarifier you know what's happening with the clarifier we, dave and, can help us with we the don't need to get that detailed yeah, no yeah. but you know that you're op we open bids on and and we're going to make a decision yeah. on the yeah. yep. Yep. yes yep. yep is working on that as well 
Mm-hmm. So can you circulate? Can you circulate to us something by Tuesday? Okay. So I can stop in on the way back from Homeland Security. If you come for the five o'clock meeting, mm-hmm. can you I'll just take a look check? At, yeah, I'll a check look in. at it. Yep. And Dave, could you come in sometime on Tuesday to look at it too? Mm-hmm. That way we don't have to actually post the right. meeting. That's the third. Look with our and work with our just, staff. Yeah. And we can just make sure we check in with Mike yep. and, and Diana and make sure that we have something mm-hmm. that we can post because it's yeah. got to be on the website. It's got to be posted so people can see it before the informational night. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then related to the informational night, um, you were, you both, uh, well, all three of us will be here in the beginning. And then I got to go up to GCC for that right, 7 o'clock because I'm on that radio committee. I'm going as well. But can, can, can you both, can you two stay here until there, make sure there's no questions? I'm sure from, what, do we, what time are we meeting on the 5th? Uh, 6 Five. o'clock. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't think that's right. Six o'clock. We started, said six, six o'clock. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. Six to seven. I mean, I don't think we. Think, I think we by didn't think it was seven, I can't imagine long. there's right. that many more questions. So you won't be too late, but I right. need to go up there. No, that's fine. Because I got to meet yeah, Kurt Wood. I mean, there's that's so. a multi-million okay. dollar oh, you're thing not, too. You're on the fifth, anyways. So, um, so it's I just, just me. Be there. So after that meeting, it's over, anyways. I could stay here and talk, not in a meeting, and try to answer questions to the public, but it won't be a meeting after you leave because he's not going to be here. Right, but. It's okay because we convened it. I can, I can, I'll mm-hmm. stay here and then I'll just run up because I, I can't be late for oh, that one. No problem. Because that's yeah, a, it's also a, it's a, multi, a lot of money to us. That's a Absolutely. multi-million dollar thing up there too. Yep. Um, so I got to be there and mm-hmm. I'm hoping to have a good turnout. I'll make sure with the fire department that we, we need to have a good Deerfield. Table. We did last time. It'd be good we, if we'd see that we, again. We need that mm-hmm. again. What day is that? That's the 5th of uh, September at GCC. Kurt Wood, he's the secretary. He's the one that's doing the radio system for us Mm -hmm. in the county over again, which is probably worth $10 million. And then um, we're also getting radios, 800 radios, Mm -hmm. which we've already appropriated $45,000 for last this this fiscal year. But we're hopefully getting them free so we don't have to spend the money. Mm -hmm. And we did have to spend some money on infrastructure. I think, right, we needed a, a base or something like that from, I think, Chief already. Yeah, it, right on it that? was yeah. minimal money compared to. Oh, yeah, the millions that oh, it's going to cost. The millions that would have cost because we'd have to maintain the system as well. So, yeah. I mean, so, um, it's a huge I amount of money. So before I scoot off from this, let me just, okay. uh, resolution, so I'd like a vote on this. This is the resolution agreeing okay. to apply for USDA assistance. So a resolution of the select board of the town of Deerfield, Massachusetts, agreeing to apply for financial assistance with the United States Department of Agricultural Rural Development to finance wastewater treatment plant, FY19, um, wastewater treatment plant 2020, 2019 application CFDA uh, number 10.760, water and waste disposal system for rural communities. Be it further resolved that the select board of the town of Deerfield authorizes the select board chair to sign all documents relating to the USDA rural development loan and or grant passed and approved this uh, 20th day of August 2019. Um, I make that motion. Do I hear a second? Today's 28th. But. Well, uh, no, I think they approved it, right, the 20th? No, you voted the resolution. Oh, we wrote That's right. We did it. I right. just exactly. have, Thank having you, you sign okay. it. Yep. 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 Now, now we're voting to sign it. Okay. So I have a second. Any further second. discussion? Uh-huh. Public comment? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. As long as we're on the sewer treatment thing, one more thing. Mem- uh, you know that... Um, handout that yellow handout yeah mm-hmm. um, I think we should run it by Lisa but if we take out the vote yes there's two vote yes if I have if, a clean version of that. right if we if we eliminate the info night mm-hmm. um, on the 20th and there's two vote yeses on um, oh you signed oh oh no no sorry yeah, we're, we're okay I, I thought you signed my place. Um, if we vote, there's two on one side and one on the two on the cartoon side and one on the information fact sheet. If we eliminate that and we do it on colored paper, other colored paper mm-hmm. like lime green or something, and we put a pile out here 
And then it, I think that is not in violation of anything because it's just a fact sheet. It, yeah, pure facts. That's all it should be. So, um, and with numbers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that that's out here. So if you could do we that, also, Diana, to, in the next day or so, so there's a pile out here for people to pick up and, and that we have laying around so people can physically take it home and look at it and calculate, you know, because I had one call. The person thought they were going to pay $2,000, and then we sat down and did it. And, it, and, it, wor and it, wor it worked out to be $80, $86. Right. So for the year, for a year. So right. they were willing to pay 500, but they weren't willing to pay 2,000. And it was like, <laughs> I, don't blame them. I said, well, how much is your assessment? And so then we went back and we did it. And it came out to like $86. So I, I think if people have the fact sheet that they can actually mm -hmm. do their own assessment and they know exactly how much they're gonna pay, they're gonna be so relieved because it's, even if you're a septic user, you're not going to be paying that much. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is for the whole benefit of the whole town, and that we will pay if there's failure. Um, and then I just, before Jeff speaks, I wanted to mention, can you, uh, Diana or Mike, um, on our homepage of our Deerfield website, mm -hmm. right above mosquitoes, and maybe in yellow, can you say the town was awarded a grant for $2.6 million? Mm -hmm. I want prominent, you know, so people understand that that was a huge uh, get for the town. And, um, well, and know, that's going to make a difference, yeah. And that, the, and that there is a vote, not, you know, down on the bottom of the page, but right smack dab in the middle of the page. Well, the Blinking. mosquitoes, the mosquito banner. thing. Banner. Thinking like like there is a vote on the yeah. ninth. The like mosquito thing can be moved down because yeah. so far we're not we're, critical right we're, not cr we're, we're just, we're real low risk at the moment. Um, nothing showing up in the highway department has really done a good job. Welcome, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Good. Thanks for coming. All right. Good. Doing good. First thing, congratulations on the grant. Excellent. That's, that's really good. That's going to be a, a big really help for everybody in town. There really no wasn't that much it. money nationally available. All right. A couple of things that might help out on this September 9th vote. Okay. And I'm just looking for clarification because I think there's some mis- conceptions out there okay so uh yeah, and I'm, you know I'm, I'm trying to do this as polite and as nice as i can okay. so uh, i'm not yeah. looking for any arguments or anything here yeah. uh but on the clarifier that's already in progress correct yes all right now on the clarifier the only thing that uh we were looking at as far as the state and the ten thousand dollar a day fine was a clarifier it's not the whole project well, if it, if it fails, right. if it's not even a fine on the clarifier. It's right. only if you fail. It's only if, the if plan it fails. 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 Right. Correct. But, you don't but meet permit. It's, the clarifier was the big issue here, as well, far as possibly the plant failing. No. Uh, on no. the immediate. No. no. See, um, that's what I'm saying. There's, yeah. There's so the some, plans, yeah. Yeah. No. There isn't. Um, there is no immediate fine today, right. tomorrow. The issue is today or tomorrow. If, if something if should the, happen down the road. If the electrical fails, if, um, if, if the clarifier doesn't right. clarify at all like that. If we don't fails, make permits. So, so if you don't make permits. So the $10,000 day fine, that's out there. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. But it's a very anytime. slim possibility well, as far as where we're at. I wouldn't say that. No, I wouldn't but, say that well, either. Well, you yeah. could even have a brand new plant fail. Let's yes. Face it. So, yes, there is. So, and, and you could you could end up in the same situation. You could. I think right. the main concern for me, af after studying all of this stuff, is um, the electrical. And right. I think that because when that goes down, be and from what Keith said, a lot of the electrical engineers will not work on that stuff anymore. There aren't any parts, mm -hmm. and the way that they plug in, and I'm. This is rudimentary because I don't know electricity. Right. No, I, the way they plug in these things onto that board, um, and you watch one of the videos, he explains that in the electrical boxes. That, that, that video is on our website. It is. It's on the web page, but you, you, um, it's all pitted. So if it fails, uh, there's no way to plug another one back in or there's no spare parts. So if that goes down like tomorrow, um, right. we could have a failure. 
and the, and the fine would probably happen in you know, a week or so after the DP says, look, you got no way to fix it, and it's just going to pump right. straight through. So that's my concern, not so much whether the clarifier has failed. Mm -hmm. If we didn't fix it, we ignored it, then they may fine us. But there's, there's not like an immediate... Right. But well, when it does fail... To, as long as we're making an effort, the town is making an effort. I want to be clear. Effort, right. As long as the town's making an effort in that, it's not likely that the state would step in and impose a fine. I think the only way they will is if we lose power and we're pumping raw sewage right in. Correct. Which, to me, is a real possibility. And I, yeah. I, I don't think just because, like, the clarifier is broken right now, they're not going to jump in and start fining us. Right. If that plant shuts down and we're pumping straight in and we have no mm -hmm. way to fix it, yeah. Right. Uh, the, well, the best way for me to describe it is the clarifier is a Band-Aid. Right. Where we no, need, I understand where we, that. Where we actually need a compression dressing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no. so it's it's slowing it down just a little bit. Right. But you need something a lot more right. significant. Well, I say I, I'm just trying to. Yeah. Make it clear. Pull, Thank right, you just for that. To make sure it's yeah. Clear for, actually, for that, people that's to understand a really good this. point because the the clarifier we're required to um, we're not in compliance from DEP standpoint, but it, but they cleanliness. know right. that we're working on it. Right. And we're moving forward right. on the well, clarifier. Right, the money was appropriated that, as special town meetings. Yep. So we Everything had, that's had the already money done. Place, we're right. in compliance as far because we're working on it. Right. But yeah. what Trevor's talking about is the potential that it could just break down. Yeah. And and that electrical panel is so bad. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, some any other part. Other thing. Or yeah. any other thing. But the electrical thing is, I think. That's the biggest thing. Right. Worry that's, for me, right? Well, I say, yep. No, no it's pun important. intended, but I was it's just looking for clarification right. yep. so to help people understand this because yep. I've been hearing a lot of course different uh, opinions and views on this whole thing. Right. So I just figured I'd bring it forward. It, it's the it's the right. It's the nervousness of it right. failing. Right. And then uh, oh, another ahead. another item would be uh, as I spoke before in our informational session here just a while back about septic systems yes. and being able to see how this is a brand new design would it not be a good idea to design yes, the system is. where septic system you could users could dispose at that plant yes it, it is it, you know i hate to add on an have it be an afterthought or an add-on right is usually when you do that it's more expensive and seeing how we're just starting the initial we're starting design, the design of this. Absolutely. Now is the time to take that input and, and look at that viability. I, I think it makes sense, and everybody We've, I've talked to, it makes sense to build that all, infrastructure. We all are supporting it. It wasn't in the figures, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that we don't stop something else and do that first. You know, we should look, evaluate all of that. But I think it seems to make sense to be able to have that capability to take for the town and, and work that into the, f the first design up I th front. I think that'd be beneficial. Uh, you know, even I've had, uh, you know, sewer user approach me mm -hmm. in septic too yep. and discuss this and say, you know, that would be fair and so on. So uh, we've, see, we've all made a commitment. Build some so I just, I just thought I'd bring that forward and it mm -hmm. might be beneficial on your it next is. information night like, to be able to say or on your information sheet say we are going to be pursuing this you yeah know, so that we'll so it eliminates it. the eliminates yeah. the you know, doubt that's you know we've that's started the discussion um one of the primary reasons is you know our primary objective is to serve the town sure mm -hmm. right now the sewer system only serves about 30 percent of the town right mm -hmm. there's 35 percent so you got about 65 percent that's not serviced by that mm -hmm. so you know if we're looking at the whole town we've got to find something that can handle the whole town right can benefit us yeah something that it makes yeah. sense i mean it really something does something that work we're, right? all, we're talking, all committed to that in talking with right. the engineers yeah. that's really you know they said yes it can be done it's just something you just have to build the infrastructure for and it would cost right. more to do that but i think in the long run we'll benefit everybody long you know 30 years in from the long now, term in right. the long yeah. term yeah. Yep. especially if this is all going out to bid anyways yeah with a grant right you know for it the dollar sense. difference right i don't think you'd be talking a lot of dollars yep. no and it makes i think sense it'd be beneficial for yep. everybody yeah the entire yeah. town yeah uh and Thank just you. one last thing just a word of caution mm -hmm. and this is not just for the board but for everybody in town 
Uh, I've heard, and several other people have heard comparison about, well, sewer users, septic users should pay, you know, the 75, 25 or whatever, it's just like the school or any other mm -hmm. entity. Well, I just want to clarify, it's not like the school, and, and be careful people out there because the major difference is when people move into town, they have the ability or to here, go to school. Air, right. The school serves everybody. Correct. The whole population. Every resident has the option. Whether they use it or not, they have that option. Where your septic system is only serving if about a third of the, the town. Right. So it's, it's really not a good comparison. I'm yeah. just saying that I think for a word of caution. So yeah. So people understand that. Just be a little careful. You're right. On, There's the ability right. to use uh, something, uh, you know, have the right, like you could choose to, like I don't have kids, but you could have the ability to adopt a child and then right. they have the ability to go right. to school. If I live out on Lee Road, right. I don't have that ability to use that septic system, uh, sewer system. Um, and more, I would relate it to our town infrastructure. Our schools use this. Right. Uh, our library uses it, police department. You know, the, the town infrastructure and the industries use it. That's why it's beneficial other than it's right. the law. Exactly. So. And I agree. I'm just saying yeah, no, it makes you know, sense. there's all sorts of different arguments because I've yep. also been hearing people say, well, why the heck do I have to pay for the landfill then? You know, why am I paying for a permit and paying yep. for bags at the landfill? Yep. You know, because just users have to pay for it. Right. Non-users don't have to pay for it. So yeah. I'm just saying, be careful. Be careful with some of these. Yep. You know, when the you analogies. do your when you do your fact sheet, mm -hmm. I would try to focus on those positives that yes. we have talked about that are that are legitimate. But right. legitimately, if the town is fined for a landfill violation, you know, monitoring. Yeah, no, I, I, I the understand. The whole town pays. Right. The whole town pays for the fines if we don't make permit. Right. And. Um, and what we're concerned about is a failure to make permit, and it it could be any one of the anything because our equipment is so old. Um, you know. Well, I just wanted to clear up no, some misconceptions yeah. there, it's good. So it's good to and clear the air. maybe shed a little light to Perfect. the fact sheet. So, yep. thank you. You know, do as you will. Very That's beneficial, all. Jeff. Okay. I really appreciate yeah, it because the more we talk about it, then the, it's it's that much easier for people to understand. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Already, I think the questions are better questions than they were just a month ago. Yeah. Oh, sure. They well, are. I think people are starting to get a better grasp of it. Yeah. yeah. It's yes. a big. Yeah. It's a big issue. Yeah. It is. It's sure. a big issue. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Good. So, Chris Harris from Eastern yeah. Ave in South Deerfield. Um, I think that after Jeff's discussion, we need to bucket three things about risk in terms of failure and permits. Okay. And so I would think one of the risks is electrical. Mm -hmm. It's an archaic system. It's an archaic control system. And I think the plan that you outlined on August 20th when we were on the tour showed that there would be a new electrical control yes. building. Yeah. And I think that's really important because I don't care what process you have, and how you configure it. If you don't have the electronic controls and the, and the process controls, algorithms built in the software, it's not gonna work. So right. I was pretty happy to hear actually that people were uh, addressing that issue because it's critical. Yeah. The other thing was um, the, the idea of going to plug flow a reactor in the uh, aeration tanks. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a very archaic, aeration process that occurs now it's right. a waste of energy yep. it's also a waste of just simple biological Correct. process yep. and so the plug flow concept and utilizing the uh, structural concrete tanks that already exist with minor repairs seem pretty logical to me so that's another thing countering that this thing won't fail if mm -hmm. you upgrade the plug flow and the aeration technologies and finally the clarifier yeah, you know, obviously you have a single clarifier. It's like susceptible to failure, one which month. happened in one of those winters that were being ex uh, discussed. And the secondary clarifier makes sense. So it's redundancy. And so I think that the plan that's outlined and that's built into these initial financial estimates makes a lot of sense in terms of efficiency, uh, effectiveness, because we need to make sure it's effective in terms Clean. of what the effluent is going Correct. out to the river, and, and just overall redundancy and contingency planning. So right. that's all I would say on that, to Jeff's point about what could lead to failure and what could lead to permits, yep. the permit violations and penalties. Yep. 
And, um, and, and I think what you're pointing out, Chris, just to interrupt you for a minute, is the operational efficiency leads to huge cost reductions. So hopefully, you know, that will help. I mean, because we're obviously not trying to make money, so the rates would be reflective of the efficiency, and that would help some of the costs because your your operational costs are going to be way yeah, down. Yeah, my gut feel on the operation costs is they're going to go down, but it's yeah. more of a mitigation on them increasing. Mm -hmm. So yes. I wouldn't I wouldn't promise people that there's any reduction coming, but it'll cap what increases might come later and, and on. And any reduction, you might be able to put stuff aside exactly. in, in the uh, Exactly, exactly for, capital for capital improvement and maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the, I, th I think that um, overall th that's, you know, we talked about the, uh, the, Jeff talked about the aspect of getting uh, uh, septic users tapped into it, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, build in the capability if you can, but people shouldn't expect it's totally free, but it will be reduced. The, Again, it's yeah, a mitigating factor. we have to run those numbers factor. and see exactly. But, I, yeah, if we and can the, help with that. And the final comment sense. about this 75-25 split um, on, 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 you know, the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. So then if you do the calculation, and I don't know what the financial models are, but I can almost guess in my head, is that the sewer users will pay over 80% of the total right. bill, right. and the non-users will pay less than 20%. So the 7525 is a bit misleading it when you do the financial you, calculations. You have so I, I just yep, want to no, emphasize that to people accurate. that we might not have the fine tuned, but it's probably 18% to 82% right. or something like that. I think you're close to that. Yep. I, 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 but I don't know it exactly. Yeah. Pretty close. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, just real quickly before we, is there any other questions on the sewer at the moment? The only thing. Um, dealing with the sewer, um, I would like the board uh, or to possibly instruct our administrators and assistant to look into the feasibility of earmarking some or all the funds coming from the solar to the wastewater uh, enterprise fund. Ah, oh, Dave, I, you know, the only thing I'm worried about on that is um, I still don't know, we don't know what the impact is on, um, you know, the new e educational foundation formula. And, and I mean, when we went to the initial meeting, Skip almost said Trevor and I, the initial calculation was like around 300,000. And um, I'm really nervous about... I, 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 I don't have a problem. Should be a percentage for sure. Because uh, some sorry. of the stuff that's coming in, like if we get marijuana uh, funding, you know, and, and I've also thought about, you know, we should really, well, you know, we I, should but, get I, a but I just together. don't want to tie us up to something until this whole thing with the edu educational formula is to straighten out. Because we just, we can't, we don't want to absorb that kind of cut. We mean huge, I mean, we're, we're talking about service reductions. In the municipal, I mean, the municipal part couldn't even absorb all of it. Mm -hmm. So it would be a cut to the school systems as well. And it just, I mean, it's a re service reduction. And, and so we need to. I know, I, I know, know there's a balancing act, but yeah. we also got to make sure that we don't keep on screwing up mm -hmm. like I we've know. been doing for years not and stuff. not putting money I aside I agree. for capital. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, I agree. one of the reasons the educational thing is as bad as it is, is because of over 30% of all our student population is school choice. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. I'm more in the IMs. We And I've studied we, this we've been recently over the out. last couple, um, well, just the last couple of years, so I've been on the uh, school committee, but also just in the last week or so, we've been looking at that number. And, and what I can say is that Deerfield Elementary, we have ramped that way back. Um, yeah, but Waitley's ramped it way up, so I it's still hitting that's us. What you're right, at the, well, at the frontier level. Frontier. Right. Yeah. It hits exactly. us at frontier. It hits us at frontier. Because no that's the only way that. Waitley can actually keep the school open. And we, we've been trying on our end at Deerfield um, to just kind of, if you look at, I think, grades, this was last, so probably fifth and sixth this year has the higher levels. If you get down to the lower grades, you might have zero in one class, two or three. Sometimes they're faculty, staff kind of thing. but. Um, 
Uh, but yes, agreed. So, uh, you know, in principle, I agree with you. Uh, I would almost like that, to put together. What I'm asking is just to have them investigate. I agree with and that. And looking at it and the ramifications and come back with something educated to us and saying this is the best way to go. And so I would also like to kind of uh, expand on that a little bit too and that what I wanted to do with these um, kind of reoccurring funds that may that may be coming to town um, would be to have have the group look at this and maybe a couple others uh, one from here one from finance all get together and look at where that funding would go in the long term and should you know some of it go to um, you know wastewater or cap you know um, capital stabilization uh, OPEB there's a couple of other areas where I'd love to kind of start to steer some of that stuff to our long-term liabilities like this stuff in capital stabilization um, and look at what what those expenses are at some point in the future we'll have the retirement paid off um, you know what I mean are fully funded so so that stream of money could then get diverted to you know talk was to divert it to o OPAP but maybe some of them a mixture we get a group together to talk about what those liabilities are and those expensive and start moving that money towards the capital stabilization and capital projects and you know this being one of them because I, I agree with you and that's that's what we hear a lot from the town is why did the town forefathers let this get this way? Why did they not put money aside? And, and you could say it for every darn building we have or every project we work on. And we're starting in the last couple of years, uh, working with Jeff and, and, and the committee, capital uh, finance committee, we're really starting to put away we're what trying, we can we're towards I, that I have stuff. to say, we're really making an effort because and we're it making is. headway. And you know, yeah. I kind of lived through it with the South Deerfield Fire District. Okay. Because that's the way they were when I first got on. Yeah. They were, you know, penny wise, dollar foolish. And they've really turned that around. And, you know, down to the fact that, you know, your turnout gear, the chief got a deal on size 10 boots. So that's what he gave everybody. <laughs> I have a size 15 foot. <laughs> it doesn't go in there very well. Right. But that's the way it was. He bought yeah. rubber gloves and rubber coats. So you got too close to a fire, it melted. <laughs> yeah. I had a barn fire was below zero at Ostrowski's. I was wearing that cheap fire gear, and I couldn't get up because the gear melted on me. Oh, how awful. Yeah. That's terrible. But now, I think at this but point, now, right, they have they, money They set started aside for with the capital and looking forward to, um, you know, uh, Scoville put out a plan for a future and everything, and that's why that fire district is what it is today. Yeah. Because they were thinking ahead all the time. Sounds Not for tomorrow, but five years, 10 years, 15 yeah. years down the road. Well, that's what Sounds we're trying to do. And that's what we've got to do. We are. But that's yeah. what we did with South County. Mm -hmm. We set yeah. it up, and, and that's what we're trying to but do. But we're just scratching the surface right now. Yeah, we well, need good sound financial up, policies, yeah. and we, we've been talking third. about that, I agree, yeah. I agree, so. Yeah, but you are making up for 40 years, so it can't happen overnight. <laughs> I know. We'll get there. We're getting there. We're getting there. So, uh, but well, I agree with that. So we, you know, I think you've heard that, Diana, right? It will, yes. We'll start to get heard. that plan together. And, okay. Um, so we have that. Um, so we have a uh, next um, item is to sign an MOU for uh, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District for Household Hazardous Waste Day, which will be September 21st. Do you have any info that I could, or maybe if it's in here? Um, um, I believe it's going to be, a, um, there's a fact sheet on the website. I think Pat put it on the website. Today. Okay. We just, we just got it from them. I think, uh, well, it's, it's the 21st. We should, yep. per, yeah, it's we in, need to advertise It's at advertise the Orange it. Transfer Station. Oh, it's at G Orange. Okay, so it's, it's not in it's the not town in of Deerfield. It's, a, it's at GCC in the Orange Transfer Station, and there'll be information on the website on both the, the Frank County Solid Waste District's website and the town's website of how folks can sign up. There is a sign-up um, requirement, so. And these are for, um, oh, here it is. Yeah, there's something here. Um, and these are, are, are generally for larger items, right? Or right. is it for bulky like waste. cans of paint or something like that? Or things that you've been bulky waste? Or right, things it's, you've been it's hazardous household waste. So anything you can't normally bring to the transfer station. Yep, so stuff you have like piled to the side that you've been trying to get rid of. And, yeah, they have a whole list of that. the eligible items um, on the website too, so. And this is open to all residents and not just ones with transfer station? Correct. Anybody yep. in the town of Deerfield. Yep. And you, yes. you just, you drive up and you pay a fee for whatever. Right. I mean, that, that's on the website too, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you know how much you have to have beforehand. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, I make a motion to um, approve this. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then there was a second one. Let's get back to that real quick. Yes, I had just added this on. Um, I received it. It's for um, an, an agreement for the town um, regarding the ag plastic trailer use. So I'm just going to give I, you I that. thought that's not covered by grant anymore. Well, or you can it? read it. Basically, yeah. Um, so this says so what, um, memorandum of understanding by and between Franklin County Solid Waste Management District and the town of Deerfield regarding agricultural plastic trailer use. The me this memorandum of understanding is executed the 28th of August uh, by and between the town. Witness that whereas the district received funds, funding through Mass DEP and Community Innovation Challenge grants and whereas the district's grant agreement allowed for the purpose per for allowed for the purchase of refurbished 20 foot storage trailers for storing agricultural plastic whereas a trailer is sited at the Deerfield transfer station and whereas the uh, ag plastics recycling program is is inactive inactive right. now therefore the district and the town agree to the following terms and conditions the district shall allow the town to use a 20 foot agricultural plastic storage trailer as dry storage for transfer station materials the town shall keep the trailer clean and in good repair while being used by the town. The district shall maintain property and in, uh, property insurance on the trailer. The town shall uh, promptly notify the district if any portion of the trailer is damaged or broken. The town will pay the district $35 per fiscal year for the use of the trailer. So as, uh, oh, and this MOU may be amended by written agreement by both parties. Shall remain in effect through June 30th, 2020. Is so Kevin here? No, is, is so Kevin, Kevin okay? but I did ask Kevin about it. Yes, so, so they're interested. I, I think they basically want to use it for dry storage. So, so what the deal is, there's a trailer there correct. now not being used because th right. we were expecting the farmers to kind of bring all their recycled plastic there. Not happening. Right. So um, it's empty, and we're thinking for 35 bucks we could put storage in there exactly. for the year. Yes. Sounds like cheap, cheap yep. storage. Yes. Makes sense. And Kevin I asked was, Kevin, and Kevin was interested. Um, just, I, I make a motion we um, approve this. And he asked for that. He thought it would be a good. Yes. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Diana, just make sure um, you have some kind of realistic value and that you call the insurance company tomorrow. Because okay. if we vote tonight, it's our responsibility. So. Well, did it say we were taking the insurance or they were going yes, to keep it? Yes, we were. Taking, okay, we were. I will call and make sure yeah. that. It will, yeah, will only it's cost already few, cited there. It so. will only cost a little bit because, we, you know, it yeah. was on our whole list. Yeah. But, you know, you need to have it listed. So yeah. make sure that that happens tomorrow because we're just, tonight we approve this. And do you have the other MOU or? You saw, um, oh, I do have two copies of that. Yes. Thank you. One copy is ours and one copy is hers. Okay. Sign them both. Yeah, we have to. We send them both back, and then um, Jonathan co-signs one and sends one back. I don't know why I only got one. That's, so we have one, you know, so Brenda has one, you know, a sign yep, by all the cop. Oh, Yep, I get you. Yeah. Oh, here. Then we'll send it that way. So uh, two other items, then I'll make one announcement. So uh, complete streets, first review of identified issues, recommendations, and next steps. Yes. So where are we at? So we received from the engineer. Um, this is Titan the Bond. Time Bond, Bond, right? We received our first um, draft of the needs uh, assessment issues and recommendations. So basically this is more of a narrative. It does have a map, um, but it should 
it's, it's intended to reflect all of the issues that were identified at our stakeholder group meeting and um, through other, you know, other public comments. And then the engineers went into the, uh, out into the sites um, over a couple days and, and looked at all these conditions. So when do we get the public here to talk about their issues? Because I had a question yeah. uh, today that somebody, you know, somebody brought up, you know, our sidewalks are a mess and, you know, a husband has a hard time with electric scooter in certain areas. And so I said, well, you know, we're going to have these meetings coming up where you can come and tell us where your major concerns are in town, and then we can um, we can factor that into our assessments. When is that process? Take so place? this is the first step. What I'd like to do now, I wanted you to see this first, but then I'd like to distribute it back out to the Complete Streets group. Mm -hmm. um, I have a recep uh, repository on the website, um, but get it back out. And, and I'd like to schedule a stakeholder group that we had before, which was the school resource officer, mm -hmm. the crossing folks. Some I see folks here, Pam and Kate, and yep. I'd love to have Greg be included. Um, and, and anybody who wants to come back, but, but schedule basically a stakeholder or a small group to make sure everything is on here. Well, that so that's my so when, concern. So I want the public the, to come in, not just a small group of stakeholders. Well, one sec. Not a <laughs> no, small group yeah. of stakeholders. I want everybody that has an issue, that they've had an issue with, like this sidewalk's bad right. and this road is bad and that are these, you yeah. know, these cars don't well, so, stop here. Right, so this should be a complete list of all of the sites that have been identified in town by that have been who, brought though? to our attention by the stakeholders and just the general public. The but same I don't think folks the general that, public yeah, the has general public the general public has not okay. addressed that yet. No, not not this document because we just received this document, but all of the sites in this document have not have, been brought to the public. I don't think everybody I don't think the public has had the chance yet because I haven't because I've been uh, waiting for uh, I know I haven't. To put but, their but information no. on that. <laughs> when we did this report and did this study, did they knock on people's door and ask questions no. as no. part of that study? No. Yeah. So no, no, they didn't. No, right. they didn't do that. So, so I know I'm jumping a little ahead of the gun yes. here. But so, I want to interrupt. And no, I'm you're not allowed. <laughs> so, <laughs> when, is, when, is the, when is the cycle on this grant? When's the money available? The first, it's a, it's the two cycles in the fall and the spring. So okay, there's so a, when is it in the fall? In, in I think, October. The first cycle is in October okay. for, for funding. Okay, so what you do is you, ta you, you, you take your application date, which is in October, and we need to nail that down because we've got a lot of stuff going on, and then you backtrack. So we have to have public input on this because there hasn't been a, st a, a town-wide no. stakeholder. No. So, we, so there we has need... been a meeting of a stakeholder. Yes, no, no, yes. no, no, no. What I what I'm saying is that the the full public has not responded to the the draft list of sites and conditions that have been created. But the list of sites and conditions were were derived from both pu some public input there that we. There was a small meeting. No, you not know, just the stakeholder group, but input that we'd received, you know. Like people in, tell in, you certain things. Right, in, in different forums, in, in not a, just in that time. And I want a larger and then, group meeting. And then this is just the draft. So this should, this should be, you know, everybody can look at this. And if there is a spot that it's is missing, not on here, that's when then add. it should yes. be so added that, <laughs> into that. <laughs> Well, for construction funding, no, no, no. And that's not no but point. that isn't the, is, there. Isn't there a money available for design? No, no. no. There's no no design. So the money October in this. is only construction. Right. Correct. Yes. So more there's probably only more construction spring, money anyways. in this. There's we're only construction spring. money in this program, not so, so design my, money. My well, so wait a second. There's only construction money in. <laughs> The spring as design. well. There's only construction Twice money in the complete streets program. There is. It doesn't fund design. Never does. It's does not to fund okay. design. Okay. So we can put something in. We got stuff here. We got mm -hmm. a draft. We can. All you have to do is have a some meetings, and we have some priorities. You got to throw it in. If you don't apply, you have no chance. We know that. So now I get that. And so I think we you know are that. going to p apply for something in October. That's okay. it. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, but, what, I'm, my, but my concern, Carolyn, though, is that what I've been waiting for 
is the public chance to have everybody's stuff yes. and, and then wait, 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 and then prioritize it. Not just throw something at it. Like, we need to do a sidewalk here, so let's throw money at it. I want it prioritized so that the most important thing that I we know, heard from but everybody. I cycle. I, there's cycles every, every, every half a year, but well, I understand that. When I think that I if we wait. Been working on this wait a minute. Can I wait a second? For, I've been for working with this, with the, committee. With this committee for two years, I know. more than that. And so w there is concern and there's stuff that we really want on that list. But my biggest concern is that I want a meeting with uh, that is broadcast loud and clear to the public where everybody can come down here and throw darts at that list and say, oh, that's not on there, or that is on there. Or at least they've got, they've put some forethought in this, okay. which you have. They've put a lot of forethought into this. And then I want to make it very loud and clear that everybody can come down here and, and complain about the trip hazard in front of their sidewalk. It just just get that but Trevor, full out list. Of that, you will yes. come with a priority. That's what I'm saying. And I want that I want the public's input before that priority is done and just something added but to that list. You should still be able to submit by October. I hope so. Oh, okay. I'm not I'm not not I'm okay. not planning to not do that. Well, I need, but my we main need thing to find is like out a what meeting the date is and then I've been back waiting date. for Vinod to get done with his part so that we could and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this I know, meeting. I so, know. that meeting needs to get scheduled. ASAP so that we can get people here and then we could start adding well, to the list. I think we should so make you the want date to right do now. a public meeting to um, add, add to, that to the list, list and yes. then there and is, so people, as you see in the end, a then this list has to be prioritized. Correct. And that's also a public Correct. List. So I want okay. more stuff on that list because I don't think okay. we've captured it all. You don't think everything's on this list? I don't. Okay. All but right, in the, I don't, I agree 100% because I've been on this for three governors worth. <laughs> And, and you'll definitely, change the pro will you give us the comments that you think too? I yes. mean, if you have comments. Yes, okay. so, we've got a group here okay. and then, um, yes. That we and would so like what happens is, stuff. and the reason why is we put so much work into this and if we miss this like, October cycle, then you're down to the, just the spring. Mm -hmm. and, and let me tell you, you, you get, it's very competitive. I know it is. So what happens is if you're not into the cycle and you don't keep trying, then you're not going to get it. Right. We've, we've worked up to the date, you know, to the door yep. multiple times. I know we and have. And we have screwed up yep. by not being aggressive. And so We'll be aggressive. Uh, we've we got help and aggressive. staff now. We're in good shape. Well, all right. All we right. need to be more aggressive. So we'll set up a public meeting. Just can you come up because nobody can hear that. Just say who you are in, in the comment. I want to really Chris, make sure Chris, I really appreciate say. you commenting. But the only comment I would say is that your process of getting additional input can be done quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can. And I, I believe things will rise to the pri priority list. Pretty from quick. That additional yes. input as well as initial and report, all the work that and she's we can done get already. on with it and yep. get something in October. I agree. And then go back in the spring for follow-up. Perfect. I think it's all going to rise to the it surface. It will, and I agree completely but with that. Just I just wanted to make sure that I, I miss the timing. allowed yeah, I, that public yeah, accountability. It's, it's, Thank you, Chris, because I just don't want to miss another cycle. We, we, if we don't get something to. going, we don't get it. Process. We're going to try. So we're going to have that meeting. Uh, I'd really like to schedule that as soon as we can, okay. whoever's planning that. And Let's then because the I've been telling right people for like a year and a half to please come and tell us we're going to have a public meeting. And I, and I know there's a lot of draft and there was a first initial stakeholder like police chief and EMS. People looked at that and said, what are our main concerns? Um, but I want the average person that's frustrated about their sidewalk to be able to come in and say, this is a priority, and okay. then see how that stacks up with everybody else's priority. So in the meantime, this is going to go up on the website tomorrow into Perfect. our Complete Streets repository. Yep. So if anybody has, you know, initially wants to take a look at it, make comments it. before the public information session, it'll Perfect. be Perfect. That's we'll, awesome. Then we'll, then then we'll schedule can, the information. They can be aware. Before they the, come in and say, our sidewalk is this, they can look and see it's already see on there. See if it's there. on there. Right. Exactly. That's right. Please do, look and do see we if wanna it's make, on there. Do we want to, like, Dave, do you know uh, what your schedule is for the week of the ninth? Of when? Of the week of September 9th or the 16th. Do you know what days so we could have a scheduled meeting right now? It, the thing is, if we don't schedule the meeting, it doesn't happen. Yep. So we're, we're going to schedule it right now. Do you want the gavel? 
No, I just am, I know you think I'm a witchy, but <laughs> I don't. I, I'm, I'm always good. writing down the thing because I you know, know what? Know. It doesn't happen unless you actually commit. So yep. well, whatever day's schedule is, we should work around the schedule, mm -hmm. and then you just tell us a date and we'll, we'll come. My thought would be to have a uh, Saturday. I mean, a lot of people work, you know, and they're busy and they're. You might get people coming in on a Saturday. Well, you know what? We have September 7th. We have the senior open house. I can, I'm can. i available the 7th. Why don't we stick it on the end of that? I You're already getting people here? People, The same people that are going to be interested Save in the senior trip. housing and the senior stuff. What do you Why think? Why don't we add it on? Just to, get, just to get their feedback. I don't know if it's really the same group of people. but It may not be. <laughs> well, But the, but the end. Yeah. If people not you're interested in senior, they're already here if they can stay and the others can go home. And then the second half of that, that session would be um, just hearing what people's concerns are. It shouldn't take people, I mean, they know what their concerns are. Yeah. They'll come and tell us pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. There is, absolutely. I, I, and, and that was the major question I had today. Was I, the I have trouble getting around. Right. I, I was just going to say accessibility is a huge issue. And so the people that are going to be here for senior housing and senior issues can tell us about accessibility. And then the other people that can get around just fine can tell us their issues too. Yeah. And if you can't make the meeting on September 7th, well, you can certainly submit mm -hmm. your complaints or concerns to um, our office. And, and we should be able to you know, make sure that they get added in. So if it gets up on our website that we have this public meeting, and that we also have the ability to forward concerns, then people will forward the concerns by September 7th. It's real, you know, everybody knows what their concerns are. I, I can tell you a few concerns that right off the top of my head, and, and there's then multiple so concerns. Whatever we can't get into our October stuff, we, we have, you know, all winter. We to have plan all winter to work on it, but we should put something in. I, 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 to miss a cycle is just not acceptable at this point. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sometimes our seniors are vocal. A couple times. So um, thank you for all that work, Diana. Sure. I really appreciate yeah. all that. And I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to read it and see what's on there and add a few things if they... So we have two dates that people need to participate on that, so we have opportunities to get grants. So we have the senior um, open house and the, and the complete streets on September 7th. And then October 2nd. Yeah, so oh, location here the, will be here. here. Um, the senior. Uh, is that 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. Scheduled for 10 to 11 a.m. 10 to 11. And then so we would probably do like. Right afterwards. 1130 or something because people will want to clear out or that discussion may go longer. You know, I, so 1130 to 1230. Um, we'll have an hour. Yeah. An additional hour for complete well, streets. So they can't get out. <laughs> and then, and then six o'clock is um, on October second here at the town hall. Is the um, hazardous mitigation um, mo uh, municipal vulnerability preparedness plan meeting? And then again, there's multi-million dollars worth of money. So bring your complaints, especially people along Bloody Brook, Kelleher Drive area. Yes. Question about the Brook. Um, Can you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Could you just come up, yeah. state your name, and what your yeah. question oh, is? Yeah. Pam? I'm Thank sorry. you. We should. We should. We need to keep doing this. Yep. Otherwise, we yep. get complaints. I hear it. <laughs> Pam Predmore, uh, 36 Grave Street. Uh, you mentioned earlier about Bloody Brook and a fund f to do some remediation for a problem there. Can you be more specific about where on Bloody Brook? It's, it's yeah. the actual culvert. Which is where? Uh, right on Kelleher, Kelleher Drive. Drive. Right across oh, okay. It's failing. It's in, it's yeah. in failure. Yeah. And so what, what we got in round three of our MVP program, um, which, I, again, uh, shockingly, I, I didn't realize that we were only a handful of communities that were fully funded, was the design work for Kelleher Drive mm -hmm. to replace that. So it will be the permitting and the design work. And then what the next round is, which will open up in the next month or so. And I don't know when they're going to actually release the funds because this is, at this point, the governor is just, any time he gets some money, he, he funds these rounds. Right. But um, 
so this fourth round, we need to be ready in the next, within the next month or so. Um, we're going to apply for implementation, which would be the million, million two replacement of that culvert. Okay. So that's the only site that cur currently they're working on, you're working right. on. Right. But that will help the flow of Bloody Brook. And, um, and then the Mosquito District has um, hired for this coming year um, someone that um, we have really high hopes of being able to work with our highway departments. So between replacing Kelleher Drive, which will increase the flow, we're hoping to be able to do some cleaning of Bloody Brook, which will help um, based on public health yeah. kind of issues. So hopefully we will have less, of, uh, you know, s be less susceptible to flooding. It's, it's, it's always potentially going to flood depending on the rain event, but, you know, we need to move the water right. more okay. and have as more someone, ability to move the water. As someone who has a stream running through our property on Grave Street, we own two sides of it. Um, you know, we have some concerns about its condition. Um, it, we're told that in years past, the town kept that clear and hasn't been able to we for a long time. We haven't been time. able to since the, I think 1984 or right. 85 was the last time the town had been doing any ditch maintenance. And what we're trying to do is figure out a way, and it was my idea, and so I can't complain about you know, the amount of time we put into it. But the, under the Mosquito District legislation, you are allowed to maintain ditches for public health. And, and, and so the idea is to have our um, supervisor work with our um, highway department so they, they know what they can and cannot do that is allowed by law to maintain the ditches in town. And that's basically what we're trying to do is just... yeah. So we in would our, hopefully in the next year be able to do some work in there. Okay, because it we've been there for 13 years now, which is not very long for a lot of people in this town, but it's almost completely overgrown. I've made some attempts to keep down some of the larger things that are growing there, but we're both in our 70s, and it's getting harder and harder to and that, do. And that is true for all of Bloody Brook yeah. as well. I mean, there's just... You know, people are getting older. It's hard to do all, but it's it's all over town. It's just not. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're at the bottom of the bowl, and so we're trying to come up with solutions that are rather creative to be able to take care of what we're doing. But that's why, seemingly, um, you know, we've we've been able to do site visits with the secretary of the EOA, who you know is this is their their you know pet. I don't want to say pet. That sounds terrible. But they, they, they are really prioritizing the MVP program. And so it's seemingly we're, we're doing very well getting funded. Okay. And, and uh, I do want to say that when we had a problem in the street because of a problem with the culvert there on Grave Street, um, the DPW came and, and repaired that. I mean, there was a hole literally in the street, you know, about this big <laughs> because of where it had just collapsed over the, over the culvert. So, but they did come and, and fix that, but I think it, it's a temporary fix. Um, so it's just, it's just some concerns. What we're trying to do is do more long-term resilient fixes. Mm -hmm. And the MVP program is wonderful because it does, allows the design work and the, and the permitting, which is your upfront costs, as well as the implementation. And we're trying to be on top of this program because as more communities join on, there'll be more competition. But right. so far, we have been fully funded for every application that we've had for, and so. Very lucky. We've been, you know, and I've been hustling on this too. Yeah, and done we a lot were of work. really, done you know, um, we're really, we have a wonderful consultant who is working with us and, you know, we just got to keep our fingers crossed because this is financially, and this is, you know, what I had told the governor multiple times is that financially, we, we like, the town of Deerfield has 119 culvert, culverts that need to be replaced that we've identified, okay? Wow. And they're between, you know, 20 and 30,000 to, you know, three or 400,000 like the Mill Village Road up to a million two 
like the Keller, uh, Kelleher Drive one, and, and you look at somebody like Holly, who has not even um, recovered from Irene, they have 296 culverts to replace, and there's only 300 people that live in that town. I mean, it, it's craziness. It's devastating. Yeah. It's, it's financially yeah. devastating. So what we're trying to do is work through this program. And, it, and we're putting in for stuff like when we go down the sewer treatment plant, you know, for the tanks. Resiliency. We'll raise, raise the height of the tanks. And, and oh, by the way, we'll repair the tanks at the same time under this program. So there, there's opportunities to work, you know, and so that round will be coming up. if we. It still know. amazes me all that you folks keep in your heads <laughs> and We're all, of the, hours, out. And all out, of the hours <laughs> that you put it's in. It's just hustling money and it's getting harder and harder. Yeah. We used to go to Boston and you know brag about how much money we bring down. Now we only go to Boston to find out what we don't have to, you know, trying to figure out what we can't spend, you know, what we don't have to spend. We you get know, discounts on our insurance. Oh man, and go to <laughs> discounts. Yeah, we go to all these things so we can get discounts. Oh, we got another 5% discount. <laughs> Well, you it know, it's off. just it pays off. every little bit helps, but it, it, so, it, it really has changed. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Pam. Greg, you have a Greg, can you Greg, come, come up on up, so introduce just, yourself? Welcome I, I, back to Deerfield. Uh, yes, Greg. Right. So happy to have you back. Thank you. My name's Greg Franceschi. I live on North Main Street across from the library, and um, I've always thought that um, the Bloody Brook was kind of a, a mess, and that um, a lot of very negative things could happen because of the fact that there are so many trees and so much you know, brush and stuff yep. overgrown, as everybody's been talking about. But um, I just don't understand what the obstacle to, you know, a group of people or the town removing some of the most obvious obstacles to the flow of the water yeah. is so I wanted to know who is the person that like will sh explain to all of us exactly what things are you know possible and not possible for the environmental well hopefully you know, this the supervisor I mean he's very young he's only worked he's with the supervisor the of the mosquito district yeah because you can't just a group can't, of people can't just go in there and start clearing out it's trees. Town. We tried to do a little bit, and we, DEP told us we couldn't do it. And so over the years, by constituting a mosquito district, um, it's legislatively possible. To, still have a lot of yeah, still have a lot of things to uh, hoops to jump through, and but you know, you're exempt from um, because it's a public health issue. You're exempt from the you know. Um, most of DEPs, some of the DEP oversight. regulations. Yes. So, w when we have a commissioner that could then explain what actions can be a supervisor. I'm a commissioner. Excuse me, an, uh, a supervisor. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to de degrade. <laughs> so, <laughs> or promote who, the other person. So, so uh, who is the person? I mean, he's working for the DEP. The no, no, no. He works for the Pioneer Valley Mosquito District. We created uh, while you were away uh, with many other. Towns. We got grants. Nobody paid yet. <laughs> Thank goodness. A little bit. But um, so constituted this Pioneer Valley Mosquito District. There hasn't been one done in over 50 years, I think. Or a new one formed. There, and there many, was many never years. one. And there was, and there was never, never one, one in the here. center of the state. So working with other towns, Board of Health created this. This does allow us an avenue to get in and start cleaning some of that. So. A supervisor would then kind of tell us what what is possible and what what's our not highway possible. department can and cannot do so that that's a process that's just starting to like I don't even know if you've hired the well no so we forwarded the person's name we we had the interviews and we forwarded slow them to, moving boat just like the water but so <laughs> something happening is not dependent on grant money it's dependent on getting the highway department and the supervisor or Together, the district yes. to yeah. talk the, about the what The EPA stepped in do. many, many years ago and said we could not clean the brook any longer because we might right. disturb a salamander or something somewhere. Well, um, for multiple but reasons. It was, yeah. you know, there was environmental concern on their part, even though it was creating a hazard for most people. Because if you look at pictures of the early 1900s of Bloody Brook, you can look from 
the center of town all the way past Butterbrook Corner with a clear view because it was all clear. Uh, but, a lot of vegetation but since then. The vegetation has been growing. Um, you know, we used to have well, the was, town crew uh, go in and start cleaning. Uh, we actually proposed at one time years ago just having prisoners come down and start at one end of the brook and start cleaning it. And the EPA stepped in and said, you can't touch that brook. So this might be an avenue to help a little bit. You still have a lot of regulations to go through, but it, it will give us. A, I mean, you can't get you can't get a big tractor through there and just. But what you can do is you can pick it As out. As you said, a group of guys could maybe go in yeah. there, surgically take out some of the stuff that are blocking culverts and trees that have fallen over it to get the flow to go a little better. Yeah, yeah. it's to be healthier. Uh, from Stop the, the standing yeah. water, less yeah. mosquitoes. That one. And, they're and dead. they're not affecting the town camp, but yes. Well, and, and honestly, you know, I had somebody call me up ranting and raving for, you know, at least 10 or 15 minutes. And then the next day I'm driving down to a meeting here and he's raking the leaves into Bloody Brook. And it's like, so, you know. That's a lot of the problem is people dump know. stuff into these drains. Mm -hmm. Eastern Avenue, Grave Street, etc. I know. So it, we're, and they should never have been in there. So they right. need to take care to keep it out. And if there's dead branches falling in, they need to pull them out. That and would that, be nice. They're dead. That's not. That, yeah. The, and that's what. Homeowners. And that's what the pub. That's what a, it takes the, a village. Yeah. It takes a community to be on the right. right and and that's what the mosquito district supervisor would do is to work with our highway department, do public education, and you know outreach. But kind of so I know true. some homeowners back a little over 20 years ago or so um, that had started cleaning and the EPA threatened them with fines if they kept that up. The, yeah, DP, D, DEP. DEP. Yeah. Well, there's in a, they're in there with a bobcat or something, and that's a little... No, they were just cleaning it, trying to make their property look better. But see, also also what happens with the Mosquito District, you, you have the right to go on public property, everyone's public property, because there are some people that also didn't want us to do anything when we were trying to do stuff a few years ago. And so it's for public health. It's really complicated. It's complicated. So you said is. something a minute ago, Trevor, though, that made me think that there was a big difference between the town doing it and, you know, it, you and your neighbors. Yeah. There is. There you know, is. I think there is. I, helping you clear out that and I don't, brush. And I don't know the legal difference between that. I just, I think that there is, a, you know, a homeowner dragging some dead stuff out, you know, versus uh, the town going in and doing something. I think there is a distinction, but I may be speaking out of turn and we should get some answers on that. And I'm hoping like the supervisor or, you know, the supervisor will work with, because um, I know in Greenfield, um, it's kind of ironic that, you know, I live a block away from the bloody brook, but we wanted to help with the, some friends of ours that were um, they were doing a a trash pickup thing primarily yep. along the Green River. Yep. So we got the kids and there were hundreds of people and all the kids were pulling stuff out of the river. Nice. Nothing you know like trees. Right. But they were but cleaning trash and stuff out and getting it nice. That's wonderful. And they do it every year, but we can't do it here because well, of the, trash and stuff. Oh, I think no, we yeah. could. Trash, you vegetation, yeah. you can't. It's just if you're cutting down because you know a lot of the. If you ask anyone, if you just look out your backyard, there are a lot of, you know, saplings and, you know, there's just a lot of stuff in the brook. Well, could that guy, I mean, is he going to come to a meeting of the Board of Selectmen and, you know, make Well, a he's going to work with Kevin. Everyone? He's going to work with Kevin to just, you know, and he'll talk about what we can do and can't do. Yeah, it we'll get some education be, out as soon as we can, for sure. I mean, that's the whole yeah. goal. His name has been forwarded to the Department of Agriculture, which oversees the Mosquito District, this, and, um... So, and he already works for Mosquito District, so we're hoping that it will go through relatively fast. Great. So we can start having him on board in another couple months. It's just okay. very slow. Your Thank state you. reclamation board business, this is like bureaucracy on steroids. So th thank you again yeah. for coming. It's good to Thanks. see you again. Great. Um, next item would be to uh, the request for um, EMT appointments to our South County EMS. Can I borrow this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that yeah. A, I don't know where my copy went. I'm not sure. Um, 
So this is from uh, Zachary Smith, our, our South County EMS director. Um, Honorable Board, I res respectfully request that the following per diem appointments be made to the South County EMS. These appointments are for two qualified and respected local providers who live and work in our coverage area and will help fill shifts and calls for service. So Philip Snow uh, was previously employed by South County EMS and Deerfield EMS while working for Deerfield Academy Security. Mr. Snow left the area and has recently returned in the position of uh, Director of Security at Eagle Brook School. We are excited to have Mr. Snow um, back in the community. He is looking forward to continuing his service with South County EMS. His compensation will be a standard EMT basic per diem rate, grade two, step one of 16.23 an hour. Um, uh, Leah, Leah Doolittle is an experienced EMT basic current uh, currently working full-time in Franklin County and re um, recently moved into our coverage area. Uh, Ms. Doolittle comes highly recommended by her peers and for and uh, the mentor staff at the South County EMS. Her enthusiasm for EMS work uh, and helping our local community will be a welcome addition to our roster and we look forward to her availability to cover both open shifts and respond to multiple calls for service in an on-call uh, basis. Uh, her compensation will be the standard EMT basic per diem rate, grade two, step one of 1623 per hour. Thank you. Um, so. I make that um, motion that we apply, um, that we um, appoint Philip Snow and Leah Doolittle. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you, you both. Yes, Aye. wonderful Thank to have you. you. Yep. Um, Sign those, and then I wanted to make one um, announcement here, quick, before we get into some other new business. So, um, Chris Harris is he, uh, Chris Harris is here, and um, this is uh, just a reminder to the area public that there will be a rain or shine World War II commemoration event surrounding the 75th am uh, anniversary of Open Market Garden three weeks uh, from now on Wednesday, September 18th, starting at 3:30 p.m. The location is 373 Greenfield Road, that's routes five and 10, at Child's Crossroad in the Wapping section of Deerfield. Guests are encouraged to arrive during the 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, beverage hour to park and be seated by 4.30 p.m. The formal program runs from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. with the featured speaker uh, being an original uh, 82nd Airborne Division paratrooper from World War II. Um, at 5.30 p.m. there will be a social hour with complimentary hot and cold food and beverages allowing guests to meet and greet time with all veterans. Um, again, that's Wednesday, September 18th. For more information, contact Chris Harris at area code 310-729-2745. Really looking forward to that, Chris, and thank you for all all your work on that, and um, that's hoping for I a good turnout there. I have to say, it will there. be a wonderful event, yes, I think. for some good I hope weather, too. Will come. <laughs> yep, rain or shine, please come and support um, this, this great event. So, sign these. Um, So, um, so first we want to talk about, this is under new business uh, on the agenda, is accept notice of sale, address right of first refusal for the New England Natural Bakers. Um, some may not be aware, um, way back we had purchased the old Oxford Pickle property. Um, that property uh, had been on the hands for quite a while. Eventually we built the town uh, garage there for highway department, um, and then at um, for a long time, we had been selling a largest partial to, to New England Natural Bakers. Um, they were based in Greenfield. We're going to come here and build. Um, there was multiple purchase and sales. It kind of went along and it went along. The, com the company went through a ton of changes and most recently uh, went through a major change in its organizational structure. Um, the new head of the company feels that they'd like to stay in Greenfield and not build here. Um, that creates an opportunity for us to purchase the property back at the same price uh, we sold it for, um, which I think many feel was really good deal. So, um, well, the idea was to it was the idea was jobs. to promote jobs and stuff to the area. So, um, 
that was kind of how it was was uh, sold, and we would um, have the opportunity here to purchase that property back, and now have that in our hands for control, either sale for you know um, economic development or whatever we choose, um, instead of letting that time lapse and having the company then sell it to who knows what. So. Um, you know, personally, I've been thinking about this, and I, I think it makes sense to purchase that property back, to have, have control over it. Um, again, it was sold at, at a very, very low price, so we would then have that ability to sell it for a higher price or decide to use it for some other reason in town, but um, I'm, in, I'm interested in economic development. So um, we were notified on the well, we were just notified, but the notification had the 20th on it. So there's a ticking clock of 30 days to purchase that property back. Um, so we would um, constitute having a, if, if there's interest on this board, to constitute having a um, special town meeting to then um, have approval from the town to purchase the property back. Do we have... How, how can we do the meet the posting date? We can't. We can't we do can. it in 30 days. So... so Council's recommended that we, um, there seems to be a willingness to, to sell it to the town. There isn't mm -hmm. another buyer in line right now. Right. Um, so she's recommended we just ask, if you agree tonight that you want to move forward with repurchasing it, that we just ask them for an extension on that 30 days and we just move as expediently as possible to a right. special. I talked to the C CEO today. And, oh, you uh, did? I did. Talk? Okay, because yep. I was going to say I'll reach out to him because nope. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry that he made this decision. Yep. But. Um, but it opens up other yeah. possibilities for us. Oh, so. no, that's fine. Yep. If they're not going to build, I won't. Yeah, I'm, exactly. That was why they hired him and they let everybody else go and, yep. and other people retired is because yep. they weren't making decisions. Right. Now so he's made a decision. Now he made a decision, so, so that's fine. Um, I think it's in the best interest of the town to move I do forward too. and I have control over that property I make that motion to for again. move forward with purchasing. Um, any discussion? Do you, do you want a second? Um, yeah, I'll second it. And then discussion? The... Um, yeah, it's, you know, the main reason the town purchased the property to start with is to make sure we had control oh, over that area. Absolutely. And, you know. Um, we just have to find somebody. Yeah, it's just. A good co another good company, that's yeah. all. Well, we did with Dumont. We're a wonderful, oh, I know. wonderful well, company. Great. And yeah. They put up a nice building, and we have some jobs there. And um, I don't know if they're open yet or not. I think they are, right? They they're are. working oh, yeah, and yeah, doing yeah. their stuff. Yeah. They've been so open for great. a while. Looks great. Yeah, um, no. So I was actually surprised when I found out they actually had purchased it last year. The uh, Dumont or this? This. This. Yeah, I know it had gone for I, I, quite there a must while. Have been nine purchase and sale extensions. Yeah. Um, and they, they went well, through a major change. They, I mean, by the time, from the time they were moving ahead with this, they ended up um, turning into an employee, three, yeah, employee the, owned you know, company. The original purchase was bought out by 100% employee owned. Which then gave them a little trouble getting finance. finance. They're working with the state. They got state know. money and then not willing to make a decision. And then those people got fired or moved on, mm -hmm. and then this guy came on. Yep, and, and they don't feel like it's worth, at that time right now, to move there, so if we can have access to that property again, it makes sense I, to I, me. It makes sense to us, too. Um, and right, then okay. we'll decide how we want to fund that in the future. So okay. We don't have to deal with that right now, but. Um, Take the vote. So, we have a second. Any, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So I will at least know that we'll notify them that we Please. intend to proceed. Yep. Um, and so let us go to special town meeting, right? Yes. 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 So That's next on the agenda. Yep. I was just going to say. <laughs> it's the next item. So uh, if we can get an extension date for a month, we, we, need, we should set the town meeting after our ca free cash is certified, which yes. is September 30th September. is what we're proposing. Yep. The yeah. finance okay. team, uh, that's in, uh, Barbara right. and Brenda. We discussed today, and I talked to them after you did as well. So yeah. uh, I have a 350th at uh, 5:30, so I guess that will have you can to be come soon. right after. Yep. <laughs> okay. That's right. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to move the, that to five so o'clock. September 30th. All right. At what time? Uh, seven, I guess. There's seven a special is meeting. the typical time. Oh, actually, time. then special yeah, we meeting. could keep the five thirty because mm -hmm. yeah. it wouldn't be more than an yeah, hour. Yeah, because right. it's just first. It's okay. a special. Yeah. All right. 
um, and then we'll discuss. And I'll have your warrant, um, so draft warrant for you on the 11th. Or and then we'll have we'll, some, right. So can, would you uh, like to vote to open the warrant tonight so we can? Yes, because we want to add some things to that. I think that there would was be, a few items. Yep, that so good. Um, I'd make a motion to open the warrant for I'll a special second town that. meeting. I'll uh, second any, any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank there you. we have it. We have a special town meeting set. Um, so next, um, next on the agenda would be um, to accept uh, Priscilla's um, retirement or resignation from the inspections office. So she's served us um, really well for a lot of years and uh, longer than I've been here. I, you know, but. I have not worked a ton Maybe, with her really? in that office, but yeah. she's done a great thing, a, great, a lot of great work, and she has, um, in her leaving, has left a nice list of her tasks, which is really helpful as you, you know, constitute um, search. Well, all these job job descriptions change, they and do. then what and what you actually do is sometimes very different yeah. from the job description. So, she took a, real good uh, a huge in, um, in, all that out initiative us. to do that. Mm -hmm. Very grateful. So thank you. Very grateful for her service to the oh, town. I'm really sad she's leaving. Yep. So address hiring, review job description, and advertisement and posting. Yeah. So I don't quite have the advertisement for posting, but Mike, um, we we did um, just to, to, I'll go into it a little under the town administrator's report, but certainly okay. Mike and I have been um, working now for a little over a week together, and we've um, come up with sort of a distribution of responsibility. So one of the things that uh, Mike's skill set lends to and also what we were looking for in the assistant town administrator was somebody to manage the planning uh, and land use functions basically as part of that. So uh, so Mike is going to be taking that on and he went and met with Priscilla and went over that list with her and he has drafted a job description uh, based on that discussion right. and has some recommendations toward okay. that as well. So, did you want to come on Yeah, Mike why don't we, um, I would like to invite Mike Lipinski yeah, up. Yeah, um, what You can grab a seat anywhere yeah. you'd like um, up I'm at the sorry, table I here. sprawl out a little bit here. <laughs> come on. Yeah, yeah. come oh, here. Okay, great. And I, I want to welcome um, Mike Lipinski to our team. I'm really excited Thank to be you. working with him and having him settle in here for a bit uh, as we get our stuff, our act together. I guess I should say that. So, thank you for um, thank you for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank yeah. you. So, and thanks for working on this um, and putting this uh, statement of duties together and essential functions. And so, this is kind of a, a if I understand this, a consolidation of what she had listed, and you guys had a discussion. Yeah, and then Go some ahead. ideas of just how to improve the. Uh, the efficiency of that office and uh, interaction with the the boards and the conservation commission. Great, the land use. Um, so did you? So um, did you meet with um, Bob? Or? Uh, I have met with Bob. Yeah, oh, I met so with Bob he... and Priscilla yesterday. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure you had input on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Friday, he's he's been in and out, but yeah, we're going to sit down and talk about uh, some of the support that he requires for his uh, board of health duties. Yeah. Okay. And, and this is just a first crack yeah, at sure. um, trying to reorganize just a little bit um, the way that office functions and just providing a little bit more support yeah. for the planning board members and uh, the zoning board of appeal. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Diana and I have also talked about maybe uh, professionalizing the position a little bit more, yeah. um, getting someone that has some uh, background and experience in planning and land use right uh, and has knowledge desire. of building codes and things like that in there right uh, so they can start uh, because I, I believe she's uh, here till the end of September yes um, yeah yep. so it would be good to get get it advertised and have some transition time that yep. that person could work with uh, Priscilla yeah uh, before she leaves so um is there a, a group of people did you know dave do you want to um spirit spearhead that with anybody to get and you would talk to last yeah, week i think about getting putting, a group together interview, and once yeah we get advertised get an interview group together and yeah to uh, and have you know have work with the team to get that enrolled yeah. so mm -hmm. that, that's awesome thank you so we were thinking that uh the function of that office could probably work with one full-time and one part-time administrative clerical assistant mm -hmm. uh, to support some of the clerical duties 
uh, and have someone with a little bit more experience and knowledge of Mass General Law and uh, the codes in, in, in the town to, to be the uh, full-time position. I'm trying to remember, how, what did we actually fund that for? Did we fund it for a 1.5 position? No, 0. 0.5, I think, or, yeah. Yeah, when I look at the budget, the Board of Health part wasn't funded by the looks of it. It wasn't. No, probably not. No, that's, no, that's not correct. No, we oh, funded. Oh, it, be just, it would be Dick was funded, or that position was funded. So in the building department, we funded, um, we left Priscilla's position as it was, so the grade three, and that a number of hours, I think it was 960 20. or 944 yeah, hours, excuse time. me. And then yep. we funded a second position for 960 hours, so another essentially half-time position um, at a grade two. That was mm -hmm. the discussion you had then. We had made a recommendation at the time to do a yes. full-time position and a half-time position, um, but we didn't get that through the finance committee and get the funding into the budget for 20 in, in the in the inspections department. I think there is also money in the Board of Health budget. Um, I thought we had got some money in for admin support, but possibly I not. I looked at it and it looked like it was asked for, but it wasn't. Yes, it, it could be the case that but we did wasn't. ask for it, yes. Because I had asked for, as I said, I had asked for I, a half-time person for Board of Health and I'd asked for one and a half one people. And a half. I mean, inspections ultimately department. we're gonna, you could yeah. combine them for one and a half. Yeah. Well, Pat's doing much of the Board of Health stuff now. So the idea is that, with what Mike's saying, is that we would keep with Priscilla all of the land use functions, including the zoning board, the, and excuse me, not with Priscilla, with that staff person, um, including the zoning board, which Pat does, and then Pat would you know, keep, retain the Board of Health administrative functions for now, since you are still the Board of Health, um, and then we'd move forward with that possibly at some point. But. But we looked at, I looked up the budget for the, I don't know if you're looking at the Yeah, I was. I was. Is it three? I'm trying to think of where that is. It's no, in the inspections. Four. It's in the public safety section. Oh, there it is. I think that's Board of it's Health. It's 22 so. and 17, I think, total. It's like 40,000 total. So were you thinking of looking, I mean, obviously we don't have the money for it this year for, to do a full-time and a admin staff. So what are you thinking to hire first? Full-time? Mm -hmm. One full-time position? Yes. Where am I? Did you find it? No, Aww. it's Board of Health. Hmm. So it's got this way. There's this way here. I, I'm, I'm just shocked, I have to tell you. I, I could have sworn that we ended up. May take a second. Maybe we'll get a glass of wine, take a break. A little bit of convoluted spot. I know, I know, it never really is, seems to be. We need a header for this stuff, like no, this is on I, this page. I, I tab mine, I can put them on the side because then you know which ones to go. Well, you're in charge of building the book this year. No. <laughs> no, I gotta, wait, 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 no, no. wait, don't. Uh, I'll, I'll find out why you continue on. No, I'm good, all right. Well, I just wanted to know if we were, um, so you were thinking of just a full time. Currently, I think we should just proceed with this position, as, as um, Mike said and David felt as well. We should get somebody in here before Priscilla retires. And then, okay, so you know, if we have to go back, you know, we can talk about it in the context of the special if you want to look at it for this year's budget. Otherwise, we got to wait till next year. So we had additional admin for like 17. Yeah. We had the, you know, 22 yep. for the. In for Priscilla. Priscilla's or that position um, and then that's it and we had the you know the inspectors that is all oh. and we were going to add I mean the whole discussion was to add that help for that office I and know. that and then it all got cut okay. right at the end so here we were that was my interpretation of yep it, was it cut, did so. it all got cut at the end oh. so I um, guess, I guess it didn't register so okay so we'll just Flush this out a little bit, see what we can get okay. for a full time, and start Sorry. moving forward. That was my fault. I didn't. I really thought we were doing one and a half. So That's what had, I was hoping we had, for. We had funded one and a half. Let me just um, look under. Okay. When, when, were you, when were you aware that Priscilla, I assume she had the last name, but no one mentioned Priscilla it, is Phelps. leaving? Just last week. Really? It was that short term. Yeah. So there was no oh, planning. She's, no, she's, she's not she's leaving until the end of September. September. Yeah. But, but you didn't have enough headway to do this job last meeting, and get it into the April 
budget. No, no, no oh, we didn't no, know in no, April. No, no, no. 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 That yeah, would have been last seven. September. I mean December. We did talk. No, yep. we did. We did talk about it. We had a full discussion at the finance committee. If you go back and look at the finance committee yes. tapes, we had a full, extensive discussion about staffing that office and what what we wanted to have funded. So that's but, all right. On the but record. at the end, it wasn't funded. It was pulled out. There was discussion <laughs> with you and Kip, and you guys decide and to pull that out. I think. You know, there was some discussion. Some of the some members of the this of the board came to the finance committee meetings and discussed it with the finance committee. And Correct. then it got changed. And then it got changed. Gotcha. All right. Well, nothing we can do about and it. And here we are. I, I could have sworn it was in there, but all right. <coughs> okay. Because I think it was the board of health part that was pulled. Yeah, and I think we had. I think both, they were I both think. were pulled. Correct. Yep. There were some hours attributed to the board of health because it. If you're really going to do it, you needed some clerical. Well, we I know mean, what we're doing this budget year. <laughs> um, so that's done. So, and you'll obviously work together to kind of get that ball yeah. rolling. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. So, uh, ADA self evaluation transition plan grant application next steps? Yeah, so I just wanted to let you know I got. Um, I thought I created a copy of it. But basically, there are three steps that are required to be able to apply for the ADA self-evaluation and transition plan money. Um, and they are um, the town has to designate a responsible employee, provide notice of ADA requirements, and establish a grievance procedure. So um, I guess I just, I'd like to put those things on your next agenda if you would like to proceed. Yes, with this and we need to for the USDA grant. When, that's right, that, we need to do when, that. When is that, um, what's the it cycle is. on that, Diane? This is due October 1st, so it, op it just opened August 1st. So I want to get those things on your next agenda. Those are the requirements, basically. Once you do those things, then you can just submit the application. Application. And the application is oh, oh, very okay. straightforward. Okay. Yeah. Well, you oh, just okay. have to designate those things as part of the application so, process. So if we put it on our next meeting, is scheduled meeting, is September 11th. Correct. You wanted, are you sure that's enough time? Yes, as long yeah. as the application goes in directly after that. Yes. Well, well do you want us to, we could put, we could do something prior. We have a posted meeting for Thursday the 5th. If you we could just meet quickly and decide mm -hmm. that. If you have, do you have a person that you used to have as your ADA coordinator? Who well, was your Kevin, ADA coordinator? Kevin. Okay. We're putting a lot on Kevin. Yeah, no, it should be yeah, should myself, be I think, or Mike, yeah, to be right. honest. Because exactly. it, right. it has to do with all the notices you yes, publish yes, and absolutely. all of that stuff. No, so, Well, I would feel better staff. if we just make a decision on this on the 5th. Okay, all right, I'll put it on the 5th. it's going to be a posted meeting for us to do the info night. Okay. We could just come in. We're going to have to hurry. Well, we can just. We could just come in for a couple minutes earlier. I'll put it right on the front of the agenda. That would be great if we could do that. Then yes, I can please. get us submitted. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me nervous to, to, wait. You know, I know. to wait. Okay. All right. In case there's some kind of you. problem. All right. And then Sounds so good. I will just um, I will you. present a person an, a, an employee the, for the ADA coordinator. Well, I'm going to recommend it to you your there. town administrator Perfect. or your assistant. Perfect. And then okay. Okay. Get Sounds the grievance procedure. Thank you. Uh, signed DOER uh, grant application yep. for municipal fuel vehicle fuel consumption reduction program. And yep. I know that you were talked about this. Chief was already doing the yep. so things, the, but Kevin that's wants right. To so move Kevin forward. has agreed. Kevin would like to do it. Um, so basically, what it is, it's applying for telemetrics to go on his fleet vehicles, and it keeps track of data. And as part of the grant for a year, we basically just have to make. Uh, we have to collect the data and report on, you know, the collecting the data to the grantor agency, and then we get to use the data to figure out how what we to, can how you can do better. how we can reduce our municipal fuel any use. financial exposure. No financial exposure at okay. all. The only the I well the only thing is after the year you have to get the equipment back. It it's basically it on loan. It's loan. Yes, That's and fine. you have to give yep. it back. So Are we were responsible for the condition of the equipment. I mean, because you're talking about putting it on vehicles yeah, that are out trucks. in the storms and stuff. No, it's in it's, it's inside. Like an internal it's, plug it's internal, in, right? In it's in the engine yeah, it's like a right. section. Reader. It's yeah. Right. No, no, it's nothing okay. like that. All right. I okay. just don't want us to be on the hook for something. Right. Yep, that makes sense. Yep, and there's also no money involved with that as well. So do you need a vote on that? Uh, I do need a vote, and I need you to sign the certificate of application, and then Kevin agreed to do a letter of agreement because he has the department head has to sign off, okay. so he agreed for, to do yep. that as well. So make, I'd make a motion to move forward with a DOR 
D-O-E-R, grant application for a municipal vehicle fuel consumption reduction program. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank you for that. It's just for the sign. Sorry, it's just the, just for, um, we, what you need to do, be doing, Diana and Mike, is every time we do any of these kind of things, this should go under our Deerfield 2030, where oh, yeah. we're trying to do reduce our footprint <laughs> and be more Absolutely. resilient, more green, the yeah. whole thing. What I mean, I, we haven't we haven't really fleshed that out, but well, we're doing wrote, all these things. We I, need to keep track of. I them. wrote in the the response basically, we are a green community with the goal of being climate resilient by by uh, 2030. As part of our energy reduction plan, the Energy Committee has identified the, the a reduction of municipal fuel consumption as a key component. Um, I told, I said that our, we are already uh, transitioning for, to hybrid vehicles in the police department, and now we'd like to evaluate our DPW fleet. Um, but I also put that we have solar landfill development going on with Meta. We're getting net metering credits. We're doing municipal aggregation. So, you know, basically, yes, all those things. Uh, we're <laughs> green, so green, green. I mean, we're already MVP. out straight, and we're really busy. But I'm hoping, um, let's can we on one of our November meetings? Put down the 2030 Deerfield 2030 as an agenda item that we can flush some of this stuff out. Because mm -hmm. I mean, it's out there that we're doing this. It we've used it, right? We've been using it as multiple reasons to do all these grants, and we're getting all these grants. Yeah, that's, but we that's really solid. haven't. We need to. We need to have some publicity within the community. We need to have some. Um, again, I, I had gotten some really cool ideas from. Um, you know, the going to that break, breakout session uh, um, on the MMA? No, no, the um, social media stuff. Oh, um, yeah. And, and education not being right. Okay. Because cause what, what they were talking about was you have to encourage, encourage public adoption of the mm -hmm. desired behavior, demonstrate commitment to, to the behavior, and share um, other with others and sustainable behavior change and everything. Education mm -hmm. isn't enough. So right. anyway, I got all these okay. notes. So it was it was like little light bulbs went off in my head. And and so it's like we've got to we've got to focus this so that we can keep using it for all these grants because we are we're really pulling in the money on this. Mm -hmm. So we got to really yeah flesh it out yep. so we can continue to keep cashing in. Okay. Because it, uh, I mean, it varies wicked every year. 2.6 million. <laughs> Seven hundred and fifty thousand on the Between MVP a a in the last 2. year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but, it's a good question. Uh, it's some years. Oh, no, no, no. That's an addition. All these grants are not counted into our budget. So yeah, so yeah, they're no, it's, it's on top of that. It's yeah. on top of that. Um, but yeah, there's. I mean, it depends get, on the year, but for sure, I mean, we'll, it'll be yeah. fifty thousand here, and yeah. you know, and then all last these MVP year, grants. Last year, it was. I mean, we just spent a half a million dollars in grants last year while I was here. Yeah, well, the MVP At program. Least. I think we're up to seven fifty. So yeah, I mean, it just depends, and the, and they come in cycles, and the, and that's why I've been so crap. I was so crabby to Trevor, and I'm sorry Maybe. about the complete streets. But the complete streets, I mean, we, we put so much effort into it, and we got to the door, and then they, you know, Deval Patrick left, and Charlie Baker started a whole new program, and he had to start all over again. So you, we have investment of staff and volunteer time into some of these grants. So it's not like it's totally free, but, um, you know, I would say we get a few million dollars worth because this, you have to add the schools get pulling money too. On top of their budget, and um, oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah um, I do. I mean, I, I I know I pull in at least half a million to a million, at least on the average. And you so you got two point six, and Trevor Trevor beat me this First year. Two point six. First timer. I know. It's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I mean. <laughs> I don't yeah, it's know. a group we, effort. It's not me. We, we we go after little ones and we go after big ones. Some of the little ones are just as much work, but you know, if you get ten thousand dollars here, or twenty thousand dollars there. There's tree grants. Here, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, we it's got good stuff. The tree grant thing. What was that? Well, it was like fifteen. Yeah, it was five thousand this year, and then you got some money before. I think. Yeah. yeah. Do so I mean, yep. you know, it's hard to tell. Brenda has the total because she has to. She has to, um, you know, keep control yep. of it. 
So That's why we're numbering our MVP things because it's going to be confusing for her. <laughs> to keep track of all the money. That's I know. right. <laughs> it's tough. And it's random. Uh, yeah, this one's going to be, you know, USDA is a big keep track of stuff. Yeah. So, um, Did we ever find out if um, Tom Scanlon can do those audits for just a few more bucks? I haven't done that no, yet, but I'm going to get immediately. I think it's yeah. more than that. There's a lot. Well, yeah, but, but he, he, he's our normal auditor, yep. so he's doing the audit anyway. So you we'll should be find able out. to pay an additional sum for him to do the, the at USDA. It's yeah, not we'll, like we'll check all that. someone has to do the whole under. Right. But I know they have to be able to be, um, the USDA has to have Sign some off or of something. Yeah. certification or something. Mm -hmm. so we'll just, definitely check on all that. Yeah, because sure. it would be a lot cheaper if we had Tom mm -hmm. to do it, since he do, un, does our underlying one. Mm hmm um, so, town administrator's report. Yes, so we talked we about a lot of this already. A, but. Yeah, we've talked about a lot of what we've been working on. Um, last week, Pat was on vacation, so it was a little hectic in the office, and Mike started. Um, so, Mike got Yay. kind of, you know, acclimated a little bit um, <laughs> without, without Pat, <laughs> but now Pat's back. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we had to get the computer. We got the computers all set up and everything organized in the Good. office. And I just have to are the say, computers working now? They are. I, I want to so you can actually send an email. We and not well, wait half an hour. well, that I mean, we still have a little <laughs> delay on our email stuff, but not too bad. Oh, but no, okay. everything should be working. I have a, uh, just um, a major, major thank you to Diana, who's been coming in like midnight. No, I'm not sure exactly what time. It's like a, an elf on the shelf thing. You, you go into our office. It is super clean. It is super organized. It looks super great. And oh, thank I'm you. Super happy. It's getting there. You know, we've got to keep I, there's it There's a lot of work, this, All yes, this paper just keeps piling up. <laughs> it's, it's night and day from what it was, and I thank you so much for that. It means a lot. If you have an organized space, you can find stuff, and it looks professional. And uh, I'm just so thrilled to see how nice it looks in there. Um, just thank want to you. thank you for thank that. You. It's a big deal. Thank so. you. You mean so, there isn't a path anymore? No. <laughs> Did you go on in? <laughs> Amazing um, work. So, so you have to watch where you're going before. <laughs> yeah. So I know it's my stuff. Because I didn't acknowledge it when I first walked in. <laughs> I know. Good. I said, my David. Started scolding me. Stuff got like, out. <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah. Carolyn's stuff is out on the. <laughs> We're like, the corner, street. we got to figure Take out where Carolyn is. No, my home. car is already full. <laughs> I have company, so she my needs car a is shelf. Full. Um, <laughs> so, as you mentioned, we had a really busy week. We had the MVP um, site visit, which was exciting, is really super exciting. And then, yeah. of course, going to the COG and Carolyn made such a great presentation. And Thank I think um, we're such a leader yes. in that program. And. Um, it's so exciting. I'm so honored to be there and be part of MVP, I have to say, because it's like Carolyn said, and, and we've been saying, it's like one of the first communities, one of the first towns, not just to do the planning, but to do the action. Yeah. And that was, I think, really significant. There are 11, what, 11 towns working with the FERCOG, all still doing planning. So the fact that Deerfield got after the action stuff like right away, it was a huge kudos to Carolyn and yes. Wendy and well, Chris. Actually, and, I, but like I said, know. I was shocked that there were, you know, other towns, they were there complaining because they didn't get any money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think it's I because it's we were doing the, the right thing with our yep. combination of doing our, our, our workshop stuff, but also the action stuff. Right. So it's really That's exciting. Great. And the, That's and the MVP grant lets us do that kind of stuff. Good so. work. Um, then, of course, we had the sewer meeting and opened the, yes. you know, the, the equipment bids. That's exciting. Get more information about that. We got our town building's assessment um, bids. The RFP was due yesterday at oh. 3 o'clock. So we got two. I think we got actually three bids, maybe four. But four, what, the fourth came in a little bit late. So I don't know that we can count that. But okay. we did get at least three. Um, those are the town building uh, advisory group is going to meet next week and start opening those and evaluating those Great. bids. Great. Um, so... Uh, let's see, we, as you know, we got the complete street stuff, so we'll move ahead with that. I've now got a special town meeting that we'll be working on. Mm -hmm. um, my, next week, we have a very uh, busy week as well. We have a ho the holiday on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there'll be a boom meeting on Tuesday. Yep. That I'll Board be, of Oversight yeah. for so, South County EMS. So the Council on Aging, we, as you know, you've appointed, just appointed them and yes. within the last couple of weeks. So those folks are getting sworn Wait. in right now. You said a boom meeting for South County? That's not next week. Senior. Oh, senior center. Oh, oh. Yep. Senior senior center. Center. So. Did I say EMS? You I'm did. sorry. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. South County like, Senior Center. <laughs> what do you mean? That's the 19th. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> sorry. 
And I only mention that Sweet. just because the Council on Aging is just raring to go, and I know the Boo now is sort of raring to go yep. as well on their long-term planning, yeah, and they're we going to do find a place. get their recommendations from that. You know, Diane yep. Cornwell. Did, did so. Christine? She, she gets signed up for that. Um, that the conference. The conference. I believe she did. I believe she yep. did. Yeah. Can you just make sure? Yep. Because um, I think Berniston was willing to. Uh, senior director was willing to share a room, so it would be cheaper. Save it more, save yeah. some money. She, yeah. That would be really great because yep. she could get certified, you know, eventually. Yeah. I think it's so it. worth it. She yeah, it is. It is. She'll, she'll bring back job. the ability to get more grants. Yep. So she really, I, I, mm -hmm. it's a huge, good investment. Yep. Yep. And then, of course, as uh, Carolyn mentioned, we have the MVB core meeting next week. And then Mike and I are going to go to a STAM meeting in Lenox. No, no, no. The core meeting isn't next week. Uh, we have a core meeting at uh, Wednesday morning. We oh. do uh, our internal core meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, just with us. Okay. Core I thought you were meeting. talking about. No, not our public, just our core group meeting. Okay. Yes. <laughs> at 9 o'clock um, on Wednesday, right? That's right. That's okay. what I have. Yep. And then Thursday, uh, we're going to go out to the STAM meeting in Lenox. Okay. Um, and that meeting, I was letting um, Beth know, that has, actually has DOR folks are going to be there updating STAM on oh. what's going on with the SMART program. So yeah. they're going to be, my understanding is they're having a public session in Lenox, and that's where we're going to be in Lenox. So I don't know if they're going to coincide, but mm. basically we're going to hopefully have more information about the SMART program through that. Good. Um, and then there, of course, you have your evening meeting of the public information session that day. Yeah. And that's also the UMass from 3 to 5, DOER is having their, their public hearing on the straw proposals for, that we just talked about with Beth. So okay. I'll be looking at that, too. I am busy. Busy, um, busy. Okay, and, and then Saturday, I, don't forget Saturday. Is and, then, the and then next Saturday is at 10 o'clock, we have our senior center housing and center sort of discussion from our pre presenters. And then yep. you just scheduled a meeting for 1130 to do a complete streets public comment and, info, you know, we'll do comment, public comment and input. Yep. Um, and uh, there was one more thing I wanted to say. Oh, and I also did schedule a department head meeting and I've actually scheduled them. I'm going to have them consistently every month. So I've actually scheduled them through September through December. Great. So I've sent that out That's to the, the staff and we'll be doing those monthly. So. Good, good. And Thank don't you. forget the vote on Monday. And then the vote. The <laughs> vote on the on the Monday. Just the keeps going every day. Monday the 9th. That's the following yes. Monday. Yep. yep. That's super important, people. Yep. Please come and out. And then we'll be back together next week on Thursday <laughs> night, and I will add that stuff you just said about the ADA coordinator onto right. that agenda, yep. and we have our public information session. Great. Um, can I just ask you Thank how you. that um, uh, that grant, has anyone reached out to you from the FERCOG on the Homeland Security grant for the um, cybersecurity? No. No. Okay. Because I have that meeting. I have the Homeland Security meeting on Tuesday. And they are supposed to have already outreach to you, so you haven't. In terms of what to do well, what? Well, we're, we're participating yeah. in that assessment. I still want us to be assessed. Yeah, no, no, we are. I mean, I think I guess I I just not recently, a long time ago, Linda Dunlevy had reached out to us to the towns and said this is what we I were going to be doing. They're supposed to be working with us. So already. I don't know if that's if. Because I I told them that they had to, the timeline was they should have everything done by December so that you can put stuff into the budget right. as a budget <laughs> season. You, know you can't ask people to do stuff and you haven't even budgeted. Right. Right. Yeah. So the timeline, again, I worked back from December, so the timeline was for them to start in September. So okay. we haven't heard anything, so well, I'll follow up on that. Okay, yeah, and I'll double check um, just to make sure. Still. I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I'm in September. Once it gets started, it's going to be so gross. Um, so then I just wanted to ask also on the hazardous mitigation, um, we, did we, uh, have you heard any more on that from, from Kim? No, only from just what you were you saying tonight, October 2nd. I want to, that has been firmed up, Carolyn. You and Kimberly have firmed that we're, up. The, we're <laughs> submitting it because. <laughs> The grant, hazardous mitigation grant, has to be done by October 1st. I know. So I don't know what the award, so if we submit it on October 1st, then um, if we have, we have to have that public meeting. 
So if we have that public meeting, we can submit our hazardous mitigation plan because um, I think the 17th, remember the 17th is the steering committee. That's right. Hazardous mitigation yep. steering committee. Yeah. No, so I knew, I, I have all these dates written down. I just didn't. If you in town, you need to come in and sign in give for me, that. Give me the note. I'll come to the meeting. 1230. We're going to. 1230. You just have to come in and sign in. Well, um, I don't want to participate, but, but. Well, yes, yes. but I meant. Yeah, we, we to have be to have a steering committee meeting. You said that's the 17th at 1230 at 1230. And then the second at six o'clock is a public meeting where people hopefully people will come on Bloody Brook, Kelleher Drive, anybody downtown that had complaints and um, and I believe there's there and then we're some... submitting it and it, so I'm going to go go work on Thursday if that's Wednesday night then Thursday I'm going to go up there with Kimberly and we're going to get it done and submit it by Friday so that when they go to Kimberly, our asterisk will be removed she is relentless, relentless man yes but it's expired <laughs> And it, and we need to get I just better money. call just, Kim and just warn let her. her. <laughs> she know, already so knows. Bring, bring the sticky buns. We uh, had that meeting. Sticky I wouldn't buns. let her leave. Bring the sticky she, buns. That's what I'm her telling her. I have to warn. The other day it's because I think I want to just make sure we firmed up the October 2nd. But yes, I hear what you're saying. The, We're firmed up. The invitations up. need to go out to, for the steering committee meeting. And then we have to post that um, October 2nd meeting, OK, for the public. Right. That needs to go up on our website. And just, I hope you have on the uh, October 5th, you have the Selectmen's Association I meeting, have that. right? Yes. Yeah. Did, okay. we, did we RSVP to that? I don't know. I sent an email yes, out. Yes, you I want think. all you want to go, and I'd like to go. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. Okay. Well, Mike should Mike go too. Mike should go. And, um, Mike, Although, unless go? he's out of town. <laughs> Sure thing. Uh, we have to write that down. What we should do is split up the breakout sessions so that we get maximum coverage on the different ones. Yep. Um, we'll get it nailed down the next couple weeks. We won't deal with it tonight, though. It's no, like a trial. It's almost it's ten, nine o'clock. Everybody's passed out, out here. <laughs> Too much okay. going on okay. here. All right. I, uh, so uh, these are multiple little grants we, that we um, have to follow up on. What are you doing now? I'm going into, we're going to um, have an executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, uh, Chapter 21B, Paragraph 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparations for negotiations with non-union non personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiation with non-union non personnel, um, interim town administrator, ATA contracts. Board may return to open session. I don't think so. No, okay, I don't so think you're so. not going to return go tonight. To no. Okay, so you're not. So nope. just for the record, you're not going to return to open session. No. Not tonight. No. no, not tonight. We'll go home. Okay. And roll call vote. Uh, I, Trevor McDaniel. Uh, I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfram. Awesome. And we are going into executive session at 8:50. Oh. Good night, guys. Night. Oh yeah. Good night. Oh, cool.